Welcome to Fantasy Audiobook, Hogwarts. Start with a divorce and marry Hermione backhanded. Chapter 91 After he first met Harry, he would fall from the book excitedly, not because of the excitement of seeing the savior, but because Harry resisted the unforgivable curse. As a master of spells, he knew better than anyone what the unforgivable curse meant. My current research finds, fluorescent spells are lethal. If you touch it with your hands, you will feel hot. But this energy is too stable, and I was wondering what way to make him unstable. This gives the effect of an explosion. Quote, after listening to Braun's explanation, Professor Flitwick frowned. To be honest, Braun you, are right to think so. However, the reason why the, fluorescent charm, can become the engraved spell of the magic lamp is because the spell it releases is stable. So your idea is good. But I don't think the possibility of success is very high. It seems to be afraid of hitting Braun. Professor fully comforted. Of course, your idea is good. The study of spells is always accompanied by various failures. Don't rush and take your time. Quote. Braun's face remained unchanged but he nodded calmly. I got it professor. I understand. Everything doesn't happen overnight. Quote. It seemed to be clear that Professor Flitwick was still a little worried. Braun joked. I, a genius in the potions world, would not do those dangerous magical experiments, and I would love my little life more than anyone. Professor Flitwick also laughed. That's good. If you can see what I mean, every year there are always wizards who go astray because of their own egos. There are too many examples of disability and death, not like potions are less dangerous. The slightest mistake in the spell can cost your life. Quote. Professor Flitwick's tone became a little dull as he spoke. Apparently remembered something sad. Let's go. It's time for class kids. Quote. Listen to the magic clock on the wall. Professor Flitwick sighed and returned to that amiable look. On Christmas Eve, Braun wakes up early as usual. Take Jerry for a walk in the castle. It's just that compared to usual, the castle is filled with the sweet and tempting smell of roasted pumpkin. Go up to the first floor. Braun stopped in front of a portrait of a pair in front of a pile of wooden barrels. Looking at the big green pear on the portrait, he stretched out his hand and scratched it. I saw that the big green pear, which had been motionless, suddenly showed its mouth and eyes, and seemed to feel that Braun scratched it itchy and began to eat and laugh. Accompanied by the laughter of the big green pear. The portrait fades away. A doorknob is exposed. This is the kitchen of Hogwarts. Open the kitchen. A group of house elves are working neatly and orderly. One of them saw Braun with the characteristic high-pitched voice of a house elf. Mr. Foley, are you here for breakfast? Braun nodded. Because the auditorium opened too late. Sometimes he would come to the cafeteria to make breakfast. Yes, what's there this morning? Pumpkin pie pumpkin pie pumpkin juice and roast chicken bacon. The house elf replied with an appointment tone. Then take Braun to where he often sits and sit down. A group of other house elves bring Braun a variety of delicious food. Phew, Jerry also jumped into the arms of the house elf unceremoniously. And the house elf is obviously familiar with the temper of this purple-skinned toad. Take out a plate of raw fish and cut it into small pieces and feed it into its mouth. Look at the purple-skinned toad with a look of enjoyment. Braun shook his head helplessly. I only feel that Jerry is getting fatter. Then start enjoying your own food. While eating the sandwich that the house elf made for himself, he did not forget to pull out his wand. The releasing fluorescent spell thinks about how to make the change you want. Yes, Braun hasn't given up on the study of fluorescent spells turning into offensive spells. Although Professor Flitwick has told him that it is impossible to succeed. But Braun always had a feeling of unwillingness. He always felt that this change was feasible. However, despite his research during this time, he has not developed a specific solution to the excessive stability of the fluorescent spell. It's not that you can't make it unstable, but that approach is clearly uncontrollable. Braun wants the kind of spell that can be controlled and has lethal power. After breakfast, Braun cut off the magic and let the ball of light disappear. Then say goodbye to the house elves and head towards the potions classroom. I thought to myself, hold on a little longer. Give up if you don't make progress before Christmas. Unlike Braun's distress, Harry Potter was overjoyed. During this time, in addition to doing homework, he went to Quidditch training every day. Feeling tired also makes his life feel full. 
The body, which had been thin due to long-term malnutrition, has also become much stronger. At least there is no longer a pallor on the face due to ischemia. Instead, it appears rosy. Charms class. Professor Flitwick announced that he could teach everyone the flying charm. This made both the lion cub and the eaglet a little excited. Especially when I saw Professor Flitwick flying Neville's Lifford through the air, it was especially exciting. Everyone wanted to give it a try. Professor Flitwick divides the class into teams of two. Everyone was very happy and some couldn't wait to try it. Ronald was a little dissatisfied because he worked with Hermione. Hermione hasn't spoken since the last time Hermione decided to ignore Ronald and Harry. So the two were divided together and both looked a little dissatisfied with each other. Come on everyone, it's like what I just said. Concentrate. Thinking about the object you want to summon is, of course, still feathers. Remember to concentrate and not be cranky. Quote, Professor Flitwick emphasized it over and over again until the young wizards seemed a little impatient before letting them start practicing. Although it is relatively simple to say, when everyone starts to practice, they find that things are not so easy. Harry waved his wand to learn to concentrate as Professor Flitwick said. But the feathers that they should have flown over with a spell remained motionless on the table. His partner, Seamus Wenigan, is an impatient. Seeing that his wand waving his wand many times did not change. In a fit of anger, he poked his feathers hard. I saw that the original white feathers finally trembled and floated up, and then burned up with a bang. The faces of the two were blackened. Ronald at the table next to them wasn't much better than they were. I saw that he kept chanting incantations, but the feathers did not pay any attention to him. Fly around, fly, fly around. He shouted loudly and waved his wand vigorously in chagrin, and the wind that carried him even blew the feathers gently. You're wrong, the professor says to be calm and focused. Watching Ronald keep shouting, Hermione finally couldn't help but say more. Ronald is not setting off his own fire at the moment. After hearing Hermione's words, he growled. Since you are so powerful, then you can try it. See if you're right. Hermione gave him a disdainful look. I took a deep breath, looking at the feather in front of him calmly waving his wand. Fly, fly too. I saw the feather fly gently from the table and slowly land in Hermione's palm. Well done, Miss Granger. Professor Flitwick clapped his hands and shouted. Everyone stop first. Look at Miss Granger, she succeeded. After saying that, he praised and added five points to Hermione. Thank you, Professor. Like you said, the spell is not a stupid waving wand. He said and glanced at Ronald defiantly. It doesn't make him angry. It's time for the end of class. Ronald's temper has been extremely bad. Holding a book, he followed Harry and Seamus and others out first. Complaining as he walked, I dare say that no one can stand her self righteousness. I really don't know why Braun always likes to be with her. I can't stand her. At the moment they are in a somewhat crowded corridor. Ronald's loud voice was eager for everyone to hear him. That's when someone bumped Ronald. Then he hurried away. It's Hermione. At the moment she was wiping the tear tracks from the corners of her eyes. I think she heard you. Harry sighed. Ronald looked at Hermione's back with some weakness and uneasiness. But he still said firmly. So what? Am I wrong? She must have noticed that none of her friends either. She has. Isn't Braun just that? Neville interjected behind them. His senses for Hermione are good because Hermione always helps him teach him homework. So he was a little dissatisfied with Ronald's complaints, but he was a little timid and didn't dare to say anything. Thank you so much for reminding me. Ronald shouted with a red face. Frightened, Neville shrunk his head. Dinner time. Braun walked into the auditorium and saw that the auditorium, which originally looked solemn and simple, had already been dressed up at this moment. A variety of Halloween ornaments hang on the walls. Thousands of bats flew in the auditorium. On the sculptures on both sides of the wall, pumpkin lanterns floating in midair and directly above the dining table of the crowd. They squeaked as if they were calling for companionship, and as if low clouds hovered in midair. Cool. Braun was also shocked by the scene in front of him. Sit at the table and arrive with dinner time. A variety of foods began to appear on the golden plate in front of everyone. Braun picked up a chicken leg and ate it slowly. The chicken drumsticks in this are more in line with his taste. At least I didn't get tired after eating so many times. 
It's really strange, suddenly appeared. I really don't understand what kind of magic this is. Shabini looked at the food in front of him and sighed. Some of the other little wizards also nodded in agreement. Pure blood does not mean wealthy. They have never seen such a way of serving. Braun you should tell us about it. Daphne asked as she watched Braun eat chicken legs without surprise. The little snakes around him were also staring at him. If there's anything you don't understand, ask Braun to be wrong. This is the feeling that Braun has brought to the little snakes with his knowledge in recent months. It's simple. Braun picked up a gold plate and knocked it. Is it because of the 8 or 90 subplate? The plates are enchanted and work like the vanishing cabinet. The kitchen has plates or other magic props. The house elves just need to keep filling in the top in order. Braun explained a little and then went on to eat. Only the adoring eyes of the surrounding snakes were left. This made Malfoy look very upset. Question, how can you be sure? Who knows if you said nonsense? Because my family also has such magic props. Why don't you have it at home? Wouldn't it? Malfoy aren't your family purebloods. There are not even such magic props. What a shame on our pure blood family. Braun's strange tone of yin and yang caused the little wizards around him to laugh. But Malfoy was very angry. What he values most is that his pure blood family identity is so belittled by Braun at this moment, where can he stand it? Roared. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Although our family does not have it, what our family has is money. I'll write to my dad in the evening. Let him buy a set too. Braun didn't want to continue arguing with the spoiled little wizard. Very casually said, oh, then buy it. However, the craftsmanship of these tableware has been lost. Good luck to be able to buy it. After speaking, he ignored Malfoy's chatter. Suddenly, Professor Quirrell, wrapped in a turban, rushed in. His face was even more full of panic. The little wizards looked at the panicked Professor Quirrell and didn't know what was going on. I saw him standing in the middle of the hall, eagerly and with some weakness. Troll, trolls are inside the underground classroom. Then look at Dumbledore, I think, you should know. After speaking, the body is soft. He fell to the ground stunned. Fainted. Ah, the originally quiet auditorium was instantly chaotic. One by one, the little wizards had panic on their faces. In a hurry, I wanted to run outside. Tranquility. Quiet. Dumbledore's voice filled the auditorium like a bell. The chaotic students instantly quieted down. Dumbledore said calmly. The prefects of the various houses led the students to their dormitories. The prefects of the various academies were quick to reflect it. One by one, they still called for the students of their own college to stand up. Slytherin, Slytherin follow me, don't be afraid of any trolls, follow me, quote. Slytherin's prefect, Marcus Flints, shouted, lead the students quickly down the stairs to Slytherin's lounge. Braun changed color in the crowd. Hermione, Braun recalled the plot probe. It's just that during this time, I only thought about studying fluorescence and changing the charms class to go with Hufflepuff so I forgot about it. The probe looked into the line next door to Gryffindor. Hermione was found not inside. Oops, or it happened. Hermione is also in the women's restroom in the basement classroom. Silently followed Slytherin's team downstairs. Then he took advantage of the fact that he was not paying attention and ran directly and cautiously down the underground classroom. Hermione, don't do anything. Braun muttered as he looked around anxiously. Although he remembered that Hermione was fine at the end but he doesn't know exactly what will happen after having such a variable as himself. Turn through a corridor. Braun instantly smelled the stench in the air. The stench is hard to describe if I have to say it, like a smelly sock that hasn't been washed in months plus no one has ever cleaned it. Public toilets. The taste of the two mixed together. That fishy feeling made Braun's stomach churn. It's as if you want to spit out everything you just ate. Boom, boom. The stone slabs on the ground tremble regularly as if a giant was passing by here. And this heavy footstep was accompanied by a low, strange mutter. It is difficult to figure out what this unknown monster is. Braun took advantage of the fire in the hallway. See a huge shadow refracted on the ground and getting closer. Braun rushed into the women's bathroom without delay. Hermione, Hermione, Braun, Hermione wiped her tears and walked out. At first, some surprise turned into anger. Braun, you're in the women's restroom right now. You. 
Braun didn't have the time to listen to Hermione's nonsense. Take her hand and run. Too late to explain that there is a troll outside. Braun said anxiously. Don't look at Harry and Ronald in the original book so easily defeating the troll, but that's because people are the protagonists. Trolls are not weak animals, otherwise they would not be used as a level to protect the Philosopher's Stone. And the little wizards in the auditorium will not be so alarmed. Braun, where will there be trolls? This is Hogwarts. Shut up, Braun said with scarlet eyes. Hermione was stunned. Don't dare to say anything more. Honestly stood there. But Braun left her alone. He was very nervous at the moment. And after being so delayed by Hermione, he can't run out now. I took a deep breath. Smell that disgusting stench in the air. His eyes also became firm. He doesn't have many spells and can't deal with trolls. Although there is a talent for the children of darkness, it is more of a blessing to the dark arts. With the magic resistance of magical creatures such as trolls, this half-hanging wizard who has never learned black magic himself can't defeat it at all. Thinking of this, his eyes also became decisive. Tuck Hermione into the innermost bathroom. You stay inside and don't come out. Hermione also noticed something was wrong at the moment. There was some helplessness and panic in his eyes. What the hell happened Braun? Braun didn't answer her. Stay inside Hermione, trust me and I'll fix it quickly. Silent. After casting a silent spell on Hermione, he closed the door from the outside as if he was not at ease. Let's wait for that troll. He took out all the alienation potions he had with him. Then he pulled out an alienated seed the size of a walnut. Wait quietly. Bang. The door of the toilet was smashed to pieces like paper paste by the wooden stick of the troll. It was blocked by bronze armor shield in the splash. I saw that the one behind the door was only 12 feet high. A giant monster with gray skin like granite and wearing an animal skin skirt and holding a huge wooden stick came over. A little head not much bigger than a potato stuck in a dumb and huge body. There was surprise on his face when he saw Braun. Obviously didn't expect delicious food to be here. Faint, Braun's spell only slowed the troll's head when it hit. But he became more and more angry. It seems that it must be used. Sighed and ignored the trolls who were still roaring. Three bottles of alienation potions were poured on the alienation seed. I saw that the great alienation seed first trembled. Then it rose from the ground. Like a giant python spitting out letters. This change made the giant monster on the opposite side a little stunned. With its poor brain capacity, it obviously didn't understand why there was suddenly another plant here. But that doesn't stop it from enjoying the delicacy in front of it. He roared and rushed up. Tangled with vines. Shish. Can't wait any longer. It's too stressful. Braun wiped the nosebleed from his nostrils with a pale face. The power of the alienated seed is indeed powerful, but as it gets stronger and stronger, the oppression of spiritual power will also increase. That's why Braun doesn't really want to use it. And because there is no soil where alienated seeds grow and the field is small, it is more restrictive to fight. That's why it's entangled with trolls. Braun took the initiative to jump out of the vine's protective range. Unleash spells to harass the trolls. Big. Turn your head. Xiao Yi is here. The spell that kept hitting the troll's head made it notice the little thing. With some surprise, he turned and grabbed Braun. It no longer wants to fight this strange plant. Just now this short meeting left it full of wounds. Now it just wants to finish its delicious snack early and leave quickly. Watch the trolls get closer and closer to you. Braun concentrated and didn't dodge. Instead, he stared quietly. A little lower, a little lower, watch the trolls bend over their outstretched hands. Braun, despite his anxiety, remained motionless as if he was frightened. The troll's little eyes, not much bigger than a mung bean, were full of cruelty. It seems that he has imagined the sensation of the snack in front of him bursting in his mouth. Smells pungent stench. Look at the giant monster that is about to come in front of you. Braun's originally serious expression instantly brightened. You lowly thing. Killing you like this is simply cheapening you. Although the trolls don't understand human language, Braun's expression is not a good word. I wanted to yell angrily but then felt a pain in my back. The roar was also stuck in the throat. Braun dodged the troll's near-death blow with a tumble. And then I saw it. The originally huge giant monster crashed to the ground, struggling to scream and being pulled to the alienated plant. Subsequently, 
The troll's voice became quieter and lower in fear. The body is also like as the fruit that accelerates corruption. It's getting more and more deflated. In the end, only a crumpled skin remained. Alienated plants seem to be full. Gently sway. If you don't know, you think it's a huge ordinary plant. And Braun collapsed to the ground. I took out a bottle of sobering potion and drank it. Instantly, Braun felt a chill in his brain. The originally suppressed spirit has also eased a lot. He leaned against the wall and gasped. Loud footsteps came from the hallway. Moments later, Professor McGonagall rushed in, followed by Snape and two scowl-looking little wizards, Ronald and Harry. Quirrell followed last. Glancing at the giant monster that had turned into skin, he seemed to be taken aback. Then he fainted on the ground again. Don't go over. Snape pulled Professor McGonagall, who wanted to step forward. Facing her questioning gaze, he explained. The alienated plants of the Foley house. Very dangerous. If you want to make it disappear, either the manipulator will take the initiative to end it or wait for the energy to run out. Quote. Sorry, Professor. I don't have the strength to control it now and wait for the energy to fade away. Quote. After a while, the alienated plant finally disappeared, leaving only an alienation seed in place that Braun carefully received in his arms. Braun Hermione that, Ronald asked impatiently. They overheard in the afternoon that Hermione was hiding in the women's bathroom crying. It's just that Halloween was too excited to forget. But when they heard about the troll, they instantly remembered. Then he hurried down, and on the way I met Professor McGonagall. In the toilet, I really don't have the strength to open it. Quote. Snape stepped forward, touched Braun's head. Braun replied. The mental energy consumption is too great. There is no other problem. Snape nodded, pulling out a bottle of potion that shimmered with a faint light. You'll feel better drinking him. Braun did not hesitate to drink the potion in one gulp. In an instant, I felt that my head, which was still dull pain, was much more comfortable. What the hell are you guys doing? Professor McGonagall pursed his lips and glanced at Braun Ronald and Harry with a pale face. Finally frozen on Braun. In addition to being the Dean of Gryffindor, she is an associate professor at the school. For the safety of students regardless of the college of the student. She wants to guarantee. Count yourself lucky, Mr. Foley. Otherwise, you would be dead now. Quote. At this time, Hermione, who was released from the toilet, ran out with red circles. Hold Braun tightly. Because he was under a silent curse, he couldn't speak, so he could only cry vigorously. Hermione, you're a little breathless. Hermione was taken aback, hurriedly let Braun go. Miss Granger, Professor McGonagall's brow furrowed deeply. After discovering the silent curse on Hermione, waved his wand. Dismiss it. Sorry, Professor. Yes, it was me Braun who was there to save me. Please don't punish him. I looked at the nervous Ronald and Harry. The light in his eyes softened a lot. It was the professor who had to come looking for the trolls, I had seen them in books, and I thought I could deal with them. But it turned out I was wrong. If Braun hadn't arrived in time, I think I'd be dead by now. Of course, I also thank Ronald and Harry. Professor McGonagall pursed his lips and looked at them. After a moment of silence. Well, I have to say I'm a little disappointed in you, Miss Granger. For your arrogance Gryffindor was deducted five points. If you're not hurt I think you should go back to the lounge and spend Halloween with your classmates. As for Mr. Foley, I dare say that being able to kill a trolls alone in first year is basically not in Hogwarts so many years of history. And in recognition of your bravery. Slytherin plus 10 points. Ahem, thank you for teaching, Braun said with a weak look. Do you need to go to the school hospital? Professor McGonagall frowned. There's no need for me to check for him. Nothing hurt. Just send back to the lounge for a night's rest. Snape, wearing a black robe that has remained unchanged for a hundred years, stood beside Braun and said. Professor McGonagall frowned but didn't say anything anyway. Grab Ronald and Harry and go. Let's go. Leave Professor Quirrell alone. Let him lie here, Snape said coldly. The look in his eyes revealed disgust and dissatisfaction with Quirrell. Braun didn't say anything. Professor Quirrell stepped over the ground with Snape's help. A moment later, Quirrell, who had been lying motionless on the ground, suddenly broke away somehow. At this time, he was not only not cowardly, but also with some ruthlessness. 
climb up and walk in front of the giant monster skin, ignoring the stench that still hasn't gone away. I looked at it carefully. After a long while, he said hoarsely. I need that power, Quirrell. The originally indifferent face instantly became flattering and the humble voice was no longer hoarse. Lord, Master, something is difficult for your servant Quirrell. Ah. Before he could finish speaking, Quirrell trembled and wailed on the ground as if he had smoked the wind. If you look closely, you can see that his face has also become much older. The evil and serpentine voice came out of Quirrell's mouth again. I need it. And get the Philosopher's Stone as soon as possible. Your weak body won't last long. To go to the Forbidden Forest as soon as possible there are unicorns. And also, Quirrell, I can see your heart. Don't think about dumping me. After speaking, the voice disappeared, and the strange and somewhat absurd feeling finally disappeared. Quirrell stood up shakily. There was some fear and trepidation in the eyes. After looking around for a while, I also fled here in a hurry. The sound of towers from the contact between the souls and the slate spread farther and farther through the empty underground classroom. Pure blood. Slytherin's common room opens. I saw that the students were celebrating happily. It seems that the matter of the trolls just now did not affect them much. Instead, it made them discuss it excitedly again. After seeing Snape, the voices of the people talking and laughing were shocked. One by one, they lowered their heads and did not dare to speak. Although Snape is their dean, and he is very good to them. But they are still as scared of Snape as students at other colleges. The cold pressure around Snape may only be unaffected by Braun. I can talk to him about various things very relaxed. Who is Braun Foley's roommate? I, Professor, I am. Sabini trembled and raised his hand. Then you send him back to the room. He needs rest now. Quote. Terrified. Sabini stepped forward and helped Braun back to his dormitory. Snape didn't stay much either. He also knew that he was here, and the students would not have the courage to revel like just now. So I explained to the prefect a few words about paying attention to the safety of the students recently and left. As soon as Snape left, the noise in the common room began. What do you say happened to Braun? I don't know, but it looks weak. Maybe he was scared by the giant monster and couldn't walk and was sent back by the dean. Would it be nice to ask Sabini later? In the bedroom, Sabini helped Braun to the bed. Asked with some curiosity, Braun, what's wrong with you? I mean how did you get sent back by the dean? Many people saw him coming, and the people who witnessed it were not only themselves. So Braun didn't hide it from his roommate Shabini. Took a sip of cold water. Braun couldn't help but snort. I don't know if the potion worked, but Braun felt a lot more comfortable. I defeated a troll and then lost my power. The professor sent me back. Quote. Oh, Merlin's pants. Is what you're saying true? Sabini exclaimed, apparently not very convinced of Braun's news. Braun shrugged. Do you think I have to lie to you? Well, I'm tired and tired right now. I'm going to sleep. After speaking, it doesn't matter whether Sabini believes it or not. Without even taking off his clothes, he covered the quilt and slept. Don't look at the short duration of the battle, but the thrill is not small. Maybe it's time for me to find a way to learn some attack spells and unforgivable spells. Otherwise, my means are too scarce. Thinking about it, Braun fell into a deep sleep. I heard that Braun fully without Slytherin defeated a giant monster alone. Of course. I've also heard that Ronald and Harry of Gryffindor were caught by Professor McGonagall on their way to challenge the trolls and then criticized in public in the Gryffindor common room. Who did you listen to? My cousin. He was Gryffindor who told me. The young wizards whispered to each other in the auditorium. But we're talking about what happened last night. Ha ha ha. Poor ghost four-eyed chicken. I heard that you dared to sneak around to challenge the trolls and were caught by Professor McGonagall. Malfoy looked at Ronald and Harry, who had just entered the Great Hall, and laughed loudly. The sound was loud throughout the auditorium. Attracted the attention of the young wizards. Looking at the two with curiosity. Shut up, Malfoy. Harry said with a red face. Are you angry, four-eyed chicken? I don't think Professor McGonagall caught you in time and said maybe you would have been eaten by trolls. Maybe it's pulled out now. Ronald looked at the mocking Malfoy and the little wizard who had been staring at them curiously, only feeling that he had never been so ashamed. I feel like we really shouldn't have gone yesterday. Braun can handle it. 
although yesterday Professor McGonagall did not punish them. But after taking them to the Gryffindor common room, he criticized them fiercely in front of everyone. The so-called good things do not go out, and bad things spread thousands of miles. It was only one night that everyone at Hogwarts knew. The only thing that is somewhat comforting. Perhaps it was they and Hermione who had reverted to their original relationship. Or in other words, Hermione is back in their business. It was hard to drive away Malfoy, who was chattering and mocking. Harry said to Ronald with some hesitation. You say, did the trolls release Braun? Was the timing of his appearance too coincidental? After all, he is not in class with us now. How would you know Hermione was in the women's restroom in the basement classroom? Ronald frowned and looked at his friend Harry said seriously. Harry, although Braun's showy behavior upsets me. But I don't think you can doubt him so much. He's my cousin, we've known him since we were kids, and I know him. Although he is a Slytherin, he is not a bad person. Quote. Ronald, haven't you thought about it? It's really a coincidence. And not only this time, but also the last time he ran as to that corridor and met the three-headed dog. And he and Snape also have a good relationship. Enough, Ronald shouted. The little lions around them looked sideways and couldn't understand what had just happened. All right, Harry, it's time for class, don't guess. Ronald whispered to Harry. Then he left the auditorium without looking back. Harry looked at his friend in amazement. Sighing, his expression couldn't help but feel lost. But it didn't take long to perk up again, and looked at Braun, who was rubbing his head and eating a sandwich, with firm eyes. I'll definitely find out your horse's feet. Ronald, I'll prove it to you. In November, the weather starts to get cold. Heavy snow also arrived as scheduled. The mountains around Hogwarts are white and covered in snow. The wide black lake also froze and became cold and hard. Some mischievous muggle wizards. I don't know where to find skates and stand on the wide black lake to skate. Of course, this also caught the attention of the professors. Caution students not to try skating lest they fall into the black lake cold. But that didn't stop the enthusiasm of the young wizards. Especially the Gryffindor's lion cubs. One by one, they fell down on the lake and stood up and fell again. It seems that it is a very interesting game for them. The composition of the fluorescent spell is a very inert element. Only the spell that makes these elements restless can accomplish the change in nature. Quote. Braun muttered as he took his eyes off the microscope. It was an alchemical item he had bought through his father. Be able to observe the nature and most basic units of matter that spells constitute. It is a must-have piece of equipment for many spell researchers. Of course, the price is also expensive. It cost a thousand galleons. If it weren't for the Foley's family making a lot of money selling potions during this time. Mr. Foley would not be willing to buy such an expensive item for Braun. I took a sip of my somewhat cold coffee. Braun looked up the window. I saw that the sky was not yet dawn at this moment. But a tall man in a mole coat, rabbit skin gloves, and huge beaver leather boots on his feet was holding a broom to defrost the Quidditch pitch. That's right, that person is Hagrid. It's Quidditch season again. He needs to guarantee the venue. Prevent grass from freezing. Exhaling deeply, Braun released another fluorescent spell and added a hint of dark magic to it. I saw that the originally stable ball of light began to resist after the magic power entered. It's like a school of sardines mixed with an uninvited guest. Soon the two cancel each other out. Disappear. Alas, failed again. Braun sighed. This is the result of his recent research. As for the magic that can cause a fluorescence riot, he calls it dark magic. It is a power that is naturally comprehended through the talent child of darkness. This power and his own magic are like two double tracks that are parallel to each other. After his attempt, this magic power has a blessing effect on some cursed classes such as, all petrified, and, fainting. It makes it more powerful. But for some common mantras like, clean and new, fluorescent flashing, and so on not only do not help, but will fail to cast spells. Plus it was comprehended through the talent, child of darkness. So he called it dark magic. Glanced at the time. Braun packed up his things and left the fourth floor classroom where Snape was teaching her. It's not that he doesn't want to go to the room of demand. It's that he always feels that the old bee will be there and have some means to monitor there. This is not his unwarranted speculation. Dumbledore has been teaching here for too long. 
He didn't believe he didn't know anything. Instead of rushing into the old bee's alarm, it is better to stay in the classroom that Snape has prepared for herself and study it. This can also make you appear less noticeable, although it has been a long time since he defeated the troll. The little wizards no longer stared at him curiously. But even so, Bronn still had to greet some of the little wizards who called his name from time to time. To show that you are not so arrogant, the Quidditch match arrived as scheduled. Bronn didn't leave alone, either. Instead, he wore a robe with a thermostatic spell applied. Sit not far from Snape. Watch the Quidditch players speeding up on the field. Pretend to be excited. In his ears, Lee Jordan's malicious and prejudiced explanation echoed. The ghost fly ball was grabbed by Gryffindor's chaser Angelina. Oh, how charming that girl is. Shameful Slytherin they want to grab her ball. Shameless and humble. Jordan, Professor McGonagall shouted his name in displeasure. Oh sorry Professor. A nice pass. The ball was passed to Arya. The bad ball was snatched by Slytherin's captain, Marcus. Is he going to score? No, stupid and arrogant Slytherin lost to Wood's interception. Gryffindor wins. Defeat those vile Slytherin. Braun shook his head. He didn't really like the sport, but he came anyway. In Quidditch class, he also tried riding a flying broomstick. How to say that, decent. It's not fast, but it's not slow. Maybe it's because he's not as addicted to this game as these wizards. So for him, the flying broom is nothing more than a tool. Roar, Gryffindor wins, with Gryffindor scoring. A huge banner in Gryffindor's audience was opened. A lion is roaring with its mouth wide open. Let out a roar. Underneath the lion is the word Gryffindor's victory. And every once in a while it is shouted. This made Gryffindor's lion cubs happy. From time to time, he also looked at Slytherin next to him with defiant eyes. Braun, who saw this scene, was a little crying and laughing. I don't know what's going on. Slytherin and Gryffindor were always able to bump into each other. Classes, stadium seating and so on. It's as if the two were born to clash. Slytherin, who was a little angry after conceding a goal, was upset enough. Where can I bear the provocation of these little lions and scold angrily? These arrogant Gryffindor, we really should give them some awesome looks. Shabini said indignantly. The same goes for the other little snakes. One by one, they scolded angrily with some dissatisfaction. Then they all turned to look at Braun, who was watching the game with great interest. What's wrong? Braun, you can get us one too. Yes, their banner is said to have been made by a first grader. We, Slytherin first-year students, have the highest attainment of your magical attainment. Quote. Listen to the chattering pleas of my classmates. Braun sighed. Okay, but we were missing a sheet. Quote. Use mine. I'll get it. Don't wait for Braun to finish. Shabini volunteered and ran to the bedroom. It didn't take long for me to run over with a sheet. Braun waved a spell. Make the color of the sheets green. Then he used a spell to conjure a huge silver snake on it. It took half an hour. A huge flag floated over Slytherin's audience. Gryffindor's mighty lion is like a poor kitten in front of this giant snake. Underneath the snake is at the request of his classmates. It reads, Victory, defeat Gryffindor, although Braun feels this is ashamed. But it did anyway. It's just that according to the plot, this group of little snakes should be disappointed for a while. See no, your flags are like kittens. Quote, Sabini triumphantly showed off to Gryffindor on the other side of him. Moreover, it was just a goal. Oh, and see no one of us scored. You little sick cats. Sabini's unbeaten expression. The angry Gryffindor couldn't wait to go over and beat him up. Snape also nodded with satisfaction when she saw her college goal. Apparently, he's always been happy to make Gryffindor deflated. Foul foul. Give him a red card. Some Gryffindor shouted angrily after seeing Slytherin hit someone maliciously. Those vile and impudent Slytherin cheated again. Shameful, but, Jordan, I remind you, Professor McGonagall whispered. Lee Jordan also seemed a little afraid. Okay, okay, Gryffindor can make free throws. The game continues. Braun didn't watch his classmates around him and Gryffindor next door have a war of words. Instead, he looked up at Harry Potter, who was flying freely in the air. He is like a bird that has returned to the sky, is soaring happily in the blue sky that belongs to him, looking for the golden snitch who doesn't know where it is. 
He looked down at Quirrell not far away, looking at him with a cowardly look at the Quidditch match. I don't know if Quirrell will ever cast a spell on Harry again. During this time, Quirrell was simply enthusiastic about him. Not only took the initiative to give him extra points in class, but also gave him some small gifts from time to time. This also made Braun more wary of Quirrell. He knew that this second fool who had been fooled by Voldemort must have some purpose. It's just that he didn't know much all the time. This also makes him pay more and more attention to his own safety. It is even said that basically the defense against the dark arts class did not go through it alone. Every time, I acted with my roommates. Speaking of this, he couldn't help but look at Ronald worriedly, and always felt that he had become a little different from before. I started to distance myself a little. Suddenly, Braun heard exclamations from all around him. I couldn't help but frown. Look up, I saw Harry's broom constantly rolling like the wind, swinging left and right. Shake Harry up and down seven times above. It's like an angry bull trying to smash the matador off its body. And then trampled heavily. Sure enough, Quirrell did it. Braun looked in the direction of Quirrell. I saw him staring at Harry in the sky with an expressionless face. Something is silently muttered in his mouth. Because everyone's attention was on Harry in the sky, no one noticed his current appearance. I looked at Snape not far from me. Like Quirrell, he has a pronunciation. But compared to Quirrell, the way he looked left and right from time to time seemed much suspicious. Braun, Braun turned his head to see Hermione, who was struggling to squeeze over to this side. What are you doing? Braun lowered his voice. I'll save Harry. After speaking, he indignantly drew his wand. A magic flame was unleashed. Not Snape. Look over to Quirrell. Braun saw that it was too late to make a move. Hermione, who was still a little resentful, pointed to Quirrell, who was still chanting words not far away. Why is he? Professor Quirrell has a problem. Although I don't know what it is. Braun gave Hermione a hint. Snape also found her robe burned. But look at Harry, who is still swaying in midair. After thinking about it, Quirrell rushed to Quirrell, who was not far away, and hit him hard. And Harry in the sky became normal at this time. The broom no longer sways from side to side. See? As soon as Professor Quirrell stops the spell, Harry recovers. Okay, let's go back. Otherwise, people will definitely be beaten up when they see you coming to Slytherin. Didn't you protect me? Hermione first looked brooding, then said with a smile. But she didn't stay long. I hurried back. Although Braun protects her to rest assured that she will not be harmed. But as a smart girl, she won't let Braun lose face either. How? Ronald asked in a worried whisper. Solved Yun. Hermione replied. Harry in the sky returned to normal, and at the same time saw the golden snitch not far from the ground. There was no hesitation. He swooped down in a daze. Oh, look, Harry Potter of Gryffindor. I saw Harry kneeling on all fours. It's like throwing up. Foul, no landing is allowed in Quidditch. Malfoy clapped his hands happily and shouted. Only soon his smile froze on his face. I saw Harry Potter spit out the golden snitch from his mouth. Grabbing it in his hand and shouting. I caught the golden snitch. The match ends with Harry catching the snitch. Everyone began to walk towards the common room. While walking, Malfoy was still shouting indignantly. He didn't catch the golden snitch at all. Obviously he swallowed it. We shouldn't lose. The little snakes around agreed. It's just that they can't say anything about it. It's like Marcus won't be sent off for a foul. There is also no mention in the Quidditch rules that the golden snitch cannot be swallowed. So Harry didn't foul. And just like that, the long-awaited match for the snakes ended with Slytherin's loss to Gryffindor. The following month, it was always calm in school. Nothing big happened. Oh, it's so cold. Hermione, who was sitting next to Braun, said shakily. As soon as the breath in the mouth meets the cold air outside, it turns into a white mist. I told you to wear more. Braun grumbled as he pulled out a small glass bottle and handed it over. What is it? Hermione took it curiously. It was warm. You can think of it as a small hand warmer. Jerry loved that he always slept on his stomach. Quote. Braun said, staring at the potion in the crucible. Because of winter. Jerry has become very inactive so Braun now basically doesn't take it with him in class and puts it in the dormitory. Let it sleep on its own. As for the bottle he gave Hermione. 
This is a byproduct of his research on the fluorescent spell products. A small, small, heat dissipating thermos. It has no other effect than hand warming. I think if this thing is sold, many people will buy it. It's so cold. Hermione complained with some dissatisfaction. Ha, huh. Braun thought about it and looked at some of the little wizards who were shivering from the cold and seemed to think that this idea was very good. And you can also earn yourself some galleons to support yourself to continue your research. Although there are fires in the Great Hall of Hogwarts, some places are still cold. Examples include the hallways, the library, and of course, Snape's potions classroom. This also made some young wizards really unbearable. Whoops. A thick green smoke suddenly appeared in the classroom, causing the students in the classroom to cough. There were also the screams of some young wizards. Idiot, I really don't know what to say about you. Mr. Longbottom, this is not the first time. Snape growled and said to a boy who was now covered in scabies and was crying. Then with a wave of his wand, he swept away the smoking potions on the ground. Burned out the crucible again. Let me see what mistake you made this time. Directly put in the viper tooth. I just said it. Turn off the heat and turn off the heat. Extinguish the flame and put the viper teeth in. Looking at Neville who was sobbing up. Snape's heart was full of powerlessness. He had never seen such a stupid child. If you don't know that this child is a wizard. He even suspected that it was a giant monster who had drunk a compound potion. Come with me. Go to the infirmary. Snape urged Neville. Take him out of the potions classroom. You guys. Keep practicing, don't give me any more problems. With Snape leaving, the oppressive atmosphere in the room instantly became much more relaxed. The little wizards with stiff faces also began to smile. From time to time, I whispered two words in my ear. It can be seen as Christmas approaches. These young wizards looking forward to the holidays don't have time to think about whether the potion should be added to the viper tooth or porcupine thorn. Whether to steam the slugs or chop them into pieces. They remain in school though physically. But the heart has long flown back to his own home. Oh, look, it's really pathetic. Harry Potter ideographic period. Is your family not wanting you? I even want to stay in school. We don't want to pay attention to you Malfoy. Ronald spoke up for Harry unhappily. Malfoy didn't care in the slightest. Glancing at Braun, who was indifferent to this side and was carefully observing his potions. Opening his mouth sarcastically. I forgot about you. Weasley, what's wrong? Is your family so poor that you and your brothers need to stay at school and eat? Crab and Boyle snickered beside Malfoy, apparently amused by Malfoy's taunts. Don't wait for Ronald to answer. Malfoy said to himself, I think so, after all, you are such a big family. Even eating pig food may not feed you. Maybe your parents are begging for your books. And just like that, a whole potions class. Malfoy didn't stop humiliating the two. It seemed that only seeing Harry's ugly expression of anger could make him feel comfortable. After potions class, Braun said goodbye to Hermione. I went to Fred and George alone to discuss Hermione's idea. Just came to the open space outside. Fred and George are seen using magic to control the snowball. Constantly chasing Professor Quirrell with a large scarf. And a lot of it hit the back of Professor Quirrell's head. This made Braun have to sigh in his heart. The only ones who can slap Voldemort in the face like this are probably the Weasley brothers. Then he happily pulled out his wand and controlled an AFDB snowball to fly towards Quirrell's head. Then it was as if nothing had happened. Walked out. Armor protection. Hey, Fred George, I have something to tell you that I don't have time to play snowball fight. Looking at the snowballs hitting the barrier in front of him, Braun waved his hand. Nope, Braun, let's talk again after the snowball fight. Fred said excitedly. A moment later, Braun talked about his plan with a look of relief with his two smashed and bruised brothers. What do you think? Can this thing make money? Of course. Although Fred's face was blue, he could not hide his excitement. Is this thing difficult? George also asked excitedly. It's not too difficult. Just help me make this bottle. I'll do the energy inside. Quote. Hey. We can also help with that, Fred said with some dissatisfaction. Braun didn't refute. Instead, a fluorescent spell was cast in front of the brothers. Look at the ball of light floating in front of you. Okay, okay you do it, Fred muttered quietly. But Braun, that might be very inefficient. 
you probably won't be able to go back for the holidays. Quote, it's okay, I can write to my parents, they've been quite busy lately. If this thing can be a hot seller, I can also earn some pocket money. Quote, that's good. We have plenty of time to do these things like this Christmas. When the students come back, we can sell them to them. Braun nodded. Don't do too much though. I think some wizards may buy thermostat wizard robes. Quote. The two nodded. I kind of agree with Braun's statement. What Braun did every day for the rest of the day was to work with Fred and George to make these thermoses. Until the students leave school. Goodbye Hermione. See you after the holidays. Goodbye, Braun. Hermione hugged Braun and stepped onto the train. Let's go. The car has left. We have to keep making those bottles. It's annoying. Fred and George both came out of nowhere, wrapped his arms around Braun's neck and said, With Christmas upon us, the school is also dressed up in a festive atmosphere. In the auditorium, mistletoe and holly hang down from the air like ribbons. In the corner, there are Christmas trees. At the top of the Christmas tree are golden stars made by Professor Flitwick waving his wand. In the evening, Braun declined the Weasley brothers' invitation to visit the Gryffindor lounge. I returned to Slytherin's lounge by myself. The lounge is very deserted. Because Slytherin is basically a pure blood wizard. So basically all the little wizards went home. Braun was alone in the lounge. But it didn't affect him in the slightest. First say hello to the ugly mermaid waving his arm in the black lake. Then he sat in an armchair by the fire and made tea in a crucible. While drinking tea, I looked at a book of charms in my hand. He borrowed it from the library. It talks about some steps to create a spell and how to avoid the danger that occurs. It's very useful for Braun now. Leaning against the warm fireplace, Braun enjoyed the silence of his own alone. Until an electronic sound interrupted his thinking. Wizard simulator cooldown completed. Open or not. Listen to the electronic sound that has been lost for a long time. Braun couldn't help but feel tears in his eyes. I'm about to forget that I still have a gold finger. Without hesitation, Braun shouted in his heart. Currently you can choose talents, disabled will, and peerless face. Challenger, please choose up to three of the talents listed above to be a wizard. There's no good talent, Braun said disappointedly. It's basically all white talent. The only blue talent that is a little interesting is the challenger. Challenger blue lose two points when choosing a talent. Chicken ribs, just pick one minus. Braun chose the Challenger talent and then started a new life simulation again. After selecting the talent, start the simulation now. As soon as the electronic tone fell, Braun felt that his eyes were dark. Slumped in a chair, at the age of zero, you were born. It's a boy and your parents like you a lot. At the age of one, you have a serious illness. At the age of two, you died. The simulation ends, because the host does not reach the age of ten this simulation has no consumption. Braun wakes up. I couldn't help but gasp a few times. What just happened? Detected that the host identity has officially become a wizard, in order to make the host feel more immersive, the simulator has been upgraded. Braun breathed a sigh of relief after seeing the simulator's explanation. It's okay if it's okay. Now it's just turning text into video, and the difference is not big. That simulation without consumption. Because the host has not survived for 10 years, the host simulation this time has no cooldown time. So I can do another simulation. That's right. Do you want to start the simulation? Simulation. Please choose three talents. Herbal mastery, hunger tolerance, lack of one, wizarding talent. Good. My pharmacist talent can be replaced. Braun said in surprise. This time the talent herbal mastery is a red talent. This means that you can continue to study potions again. Choose Herbal Mastery, Hunger Tolerance, Whimsy. Select Talent to complete. The current talent is detailed below. Herbal Mastery, Red, you have an extraordinary instinct for herbs and are always able to make good use of the surrounding plants when you are injured. Hunger Tolerance, White, Tolerance for Hunger makes it easier for you to survive. Whimsical, Blue, you can always have some weird ideas. The simulation officially begins. Braun's eyes darkened. Consciousness appeared outside a log cabin. Exotic buildings and sculptures with a touch of primitiveness and quaintness. Before he could take a closer look. Then I heard a burst of cries. Seeing her Braun can understand that this is the protagonist of his sims. 
It's just that this time the protagonist is a Zulu, which is somewhat unexpected to him. It seems that the people selected in the wizard simulator are not necessarily fixed. Zero years old, you were born a girl. Your parents are a little disappointed. Because what is missing in the tribe are strong male warriors. One year old, you're growing. Two years old, you're growing. Quote dot 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 quote. Braun frowned, only to see the scene change rapidly. It's like speeding up. In the blink of an eye, the baby had grown into a girl. At the age of 11, you suddenly burst out with a powerful force to kill an African elephant during an elephant hunt. Instead of being afraid of you, the people look at you with adoration in their eyes. Your parents weep with joy and take you to the largest tent in the tribe. This is a tent for tribal sacrifices. The sacrifice is an old lady covered in tattoos who examines you and decides to take you as an apprentice. You also know the name of your tribe at this moment, Ukurukuru. At the age of 12, under the guidance of the old priest, you learn not only those difficult knowledge but also a lot of knowledge of sacrifice and witchcraft. You're interested in these. At the age of 18, because of the death of the old sacrifice, you have become the new sacrifice of the tribe at this time. Because of your closeness to plants and the use of a witchcraft that summons the black snake, you are called the black snake witch by the surrounding tribes. In the same year, you married the most powerful warrior of the tribe. Fifty years old, you have four children. But you feel sorry that none of them have the same talent to become sacrifices as you. Unable to communicate with the great god Asa. Fifty-one years old, because of your strength, your tribe has become the most powerful tribe around. But you're not happy, because it hasn't rained for three years. You know that if there is no rain, your tribe will perish. You're worried about that. In the same year, you really couldn't bear the pleading of your eldest son and the harsh living environment. Finally you decide to take your tribe with you. With your reputation, you took the tribe through dozens of tribes in the step without danger. There was only one conflict. To defend your majesty you killed the opposing patriarch. And take away the most beautiful woman of the tribe and make her the wife of your eldest son. At the age of 52, you have come to a new step. The water and plants here are abundant and food is abundant. You have decided to settle here with the tribe. 53 years old, I don't know why you found that your magic began to decline. It seems that even the divine connection that could communicate with you has become weaker and weaker. This makes you panic. Opening square bracket dot 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 closing parenthesis. 59, although you can still use magic, now you are no longer able to exert the power of as before. You find a different way to start transforming all kinds of beasts with the bloodlines of various beasts. At the same time, he made many magical poisons with his knowledge of herbalism. You also begin to consciously cultivate your successors. Opening square bracket dot 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 closing square bracket. At 63, you noticed some changes. Some strangely dressed and blonde people began to appear in this ancient land. You are acutely aware of the danger. These white men set out to attack your tribe one night. They used something capable of sending out huge explosions to inflict heavy losses on the tribe's warriors. But with the help of your poison and modified beasts, you resisted. But your daughter in law and granddaughter died in the night raid. Your son has also become a waste that can no longer bear heirs for the family. Angry and starting to unite with the surrounding tribes to attack these invaders, you have a great success. The aggressors were repulsed. At 64, those white men reappeared. Originally, you thought of attacking them according to the previous method but you find a group of people with small sticks and big robes. Keen you feel a peculiar power from them. You know it's magic. In the same year, your tribe was breached. Those with small sticks join forces to defeat you. You're dead. This simulation is over. Do you have a talent for curing? Cur. Replace. No. Cured. Herbal mastery. Talent. Talent has solidified. Simulation time. 64 years. Looking forward to your next simulation. Braun didn't heed the hint that followed. Instead, I began to feel the changes in my heart. First of all, a lot of knowledge of refining poisons and antidotes appeared in his mind. There are also some strange and weird refining methods that are similar to the current potion refining. Alas, it's a pity. Most of the witchcraft of the black snake which is some witchcraft that communicates and prays to the gods. You can't believe in their god yourself. 
As for other witchcraft, although the power is not bad, the conditions are too harsh. Compared to the English witchcraft he studied, witchcraft in the distant black continent, or that the witchcraft of the tribe where the black snake which is located is more of some cursed witchcraft. For example, a witchcraft called, Eternal Fear. To achieve this witchcraft, you first need to collect the blood hair and scaffold of the person being cast. Then set up a magic array depicted by wolf blood on the night of the full moon. Summon the dream of the demon of fear to invade the target. The invaded person will then have nightmares until the demon of fear takes away his soul. Although it has various powerful effects such as being unable to be broken. But the conditions of use are harsh. Is it bad to collect blood hair and directly use a spell to solve the other party? There is also an evil witchcraft called the Kurukuru Puppet. If you want to use it, you must first find a child with a congenital IQ defect. Then he was constantly fed special herbs. Exercise his body. Finally, he transplanted part of his body tissue into the puppet's body. Then the other person will obey you. The puppets created in this way not only have powerful attack power. It also has the property of not being afraid of death. Braun is dazzled by all kinds of strange witchcraft. Although he will not learn these things, it also has great reference significance. Be able to give him some inspiration. Black Snake Witch. If it weren't for the loss of the patron saint of the sacrificial witchcraft communication tribe, she might be comparable to Merlin. Braun, who has simulated Merlin's life, is not until how strong he is. If it is not carried away by love, it will not be sealed. And even if it is sealed, it can live to 300 years old without eating or drinking, which is simply beyond the human species. The Black Snake Witch, on the other hand, was able to compare herself to Merlin by borrowing the power of the tribe's guardian god to see how strong the god power behind her was. In other words, is there really a god in this world? Braun thought with some hesitation. Then he denied himself. God is just a more powerful creature. Like a wizard with magic, isn't he also a god in the eyes of muggles? Leave these more philosophical and profound things behind. Braun didn't stay here much and quickly returned to his dorm and collapsed on his bed. On Christmas morning, Braun woke up as usual, leaving him alone in the dormitory. Like Sabini, they had already returned home, but Braun didn't look lost in the cold. The only thing that surprised him a little was that his dormitory was full of all kinds of gifts. Needless to say, these were all sent in with the help of house elves. For them, Hogwarts magic is undefensible to them and they can go wherever they want. It's just that they don't do that. Because the fireplace in the common room has not been extinguished. So it wasn't so cold inside the dormitory. Braun, 8 or 9 3, took off the silk pajamas on his body and put on his pair one by one. Then he began to unpack his gifts one by one. A lot of things have cost Braun a long time. Ginny gave him a bracelet. She bought it when she was visiting Charlie in Romania. The stall owner said it would bring good luck. Shabini gave him a flying saucer that would bite. According to him, the only drawback to this very interesting thing is that it hurts when biting. Ronald and Harry both gave him a large packet of snacks. It seems that they have not thought about what exactly to send. Of course, Braun gave them candy, but Braun added an extra pair of boxers to Ronald. Well, that's what Braun got from Harry's cousin Dolly last year. Last year, Mrs. Foley helped herself, and today Braun gave Ronald no waste of boxing. Hermione's gift is larger. Braun opened the very heavy package. Inside is a very beautiful set of glass test tubes and a set of beautiful scalpels. Of course, all kinds of equipment required for those experiments are indispensable. It seems that Braun's use of alchemical microscopes during this time led her to mistakenly believe that Braun was interested in muggle-related medicine. His mother, Mrs. Foley, had the same stuff as usual. It is still an alchemical item with protective magic. It was as if she was always worried that Braun would die at school. Snap this dark green badge with a silver snake on it to your robe. Braun went to open his father, Mr. Foley, again. After opening the package, Braun couldn't help but feel a little helpless. Very practical but also vulgar thing, Jingolin. Looking at this small pile, there must be at least a thousand. It seems that my family has indeed made a lot of money during this time. Of course, Braun also gave gifts to his friends. Ginny was given a brand new set of teaching materials. 
hopefully, she won't be bothered by always using secondhand books next year. What was given to Shabini was a large bundle of laborious fireworks. He always wanted this but it wasn't enough to play. Hermione was given a set of potions knowledge that he had carefully curated. Something similar to Snape's old textbooks. It contains some potions trivia and some improved potion refining techniques. Hope that helps her. After unpacking the gift, Braun stuffed these things into the leather case where he had cast a non-marking telescopic spell. As we all know, the traceless telescopic charm is not allowed to be applied to personal items. This is illegal. Braun also asked Mr. Foley. But his answer is. This is a family tradition from the Foley family, and there was no wizard secrecy law at the time, so it was not considered illegal. Of course, Braun would not argue that this ancestral suitcase is a modern style. Lest Mr. Foley beat himself up in anger. Instead, he gladly accepted this gift from the ancestors. Pack your stuff. Braun dressed up with his aunt, Molly Weasley put on another coat in the white sweater that Weasley gave him and went out. Braun left the common room and prepared to go to Fred and George to continue his fortune. Of course, he hadn't forgotten to go to the kitchen to find something to eat before that. Gryffindor Lounge. Ronald and Harry were already awake by the moment. Start unpacking your own gifts. Oh, I didn't expect I would have a gift too. Ronald said with some self-deprecation. Then I found three packages under my bed. Ronald's gift does seem shabby compared to Harry's full bed. I didn't expect my uncle to give me gifts. Harry opened an envelope and poured out a 50 pence coin from it. And of course a letter. Very happy, this is your first Christmas away from our house. In order to wish you a happy life alone, your aunt and I have given you a small gift. Quote. What is it? Muggle money. Ronald was clearly interested in the white coin. Well, for you. Harry handed it to Ronald. After seeing the piles of gold gallons in his family's vault. Harry clearly didn't take a fancy to the 50 pence. Since Ronald is curious, give it to him. Thank you so much. I think my dad likes this. He was always curious about muggles. At the beginning of school, Hermione's parents were still pulling to ask questions. Ronald was holding the 50 pence coin and obviously liked it. Have you known Hermione that long? Harry asked casually as he opened the gift. Braun and Hermione met earlier. When it comes to Braun's tacit understanding, I don't say anything further. Harry believes that Snape is trying to steal the treasure guarded by Neville, the three-headed dog. Braun is Snape's assistant. Ronald thinks that Braun is blinded by Snape, and Snape is the real bad guy. Of course, his heart also seemed a little shaken with Harry's reasoning again and again. Therefore, in order to maintain friendship, the two tacitly do not talk about Braun. It's your father's stuff. I've always left it to me. Now that you're officially stepping into the wizarding world, I'll give this thing back to you. I hope you can use it well. Harry looked at the pale silver gray robe in his hand and looked a little puzzled. I don't understand what this thing really is. But Ronald beside him was already shouting with surprise and envy. Invisibility cloak. Oh, my God, who gave it to you? Invisibility cloak, what is it? Harry asked with some doubt. An invisibility cloak is a garment made of the skin of an invisibility beast that is worn so that others cannot see you. Because stealth beasts are very rare, the stock of invisibility clothing is also very small, very precious. Harry handed Ronald the note in his hand. I don't know, but it was my father's relic. Quote. Ronald looked at the note. But the look is still difficult to hide envy. The two played in the dormitory in invisibility cloaks for a while before unpacking the presents. I dare say my mom gave me a sweater. Look, it's still my least favorite purple. Ronald said helplessly as he pulled out a purple sweater. I also have a gift from Mrs. Weasley here. Harry said with some surprise. It must have been a Weasley sweater and a big bag of lactose. My mom always liked to give these. I have one every year. Quote quote. Harry unpacked what Ronald said. Sure enough, it's the same as Ronald said. A red sweater also has a large packet of homemade lactose. Harry tasted a piece and it tasted good. There was a bustling sound outside. George and Fred were walking in wearing two sweaters of different colors. On the sweater is A, J, and A, F, with mothers. Hey Fred, hey George, hey, Harry, Ronald, why didn't you put on your sweater? Yes, the sweater is very warm. And it's comfortable, 
You don't even have letters on your sweater. Yes, our sweaters all have letters. Percy's top is A. P. I dare say mom is on time to celebrate him becoming a prefect. Quote, quote. The two talked and laughed while putting on his sweater despite Ronald's objections. Ronald put it on despite saying he didn't like it. Harry you have too. And I decided Harry was going to be more exquisite than mine. Mom always gives this to others better than to her own family. I dare say bronze one is better than ours either. Oh, Braun ideographic period. I remember we promised him to continue going today. Quote quote. I forgot too. Then let's go quickly. After speaking, the two people hurriedly ran away. Harry's brow furrowed. Ronald what did you do with Fred and George with Braun? Ronald shook his head and opened Braun's package and felt amused to see the red fist cover inside. Harry, do you know this? Is this a glove? Braun said it was especially popular among muggle kids. He said and brought a few strokes. It's just that his thin little body with a fist cover is not only not deterrent, but also looks a little funny. It's a boxing cover. It's not particularly popular. Some muggle kids love it. Quote. Saying that, Harry couldn't help but feel a little afraid. He is too shadowy for boxing. His cousin Dolly didn't take him to experiment with his boxing. It's just that why does Ronald's boxing look so familiar? Thinking like this, I couldn't help but lean over. This is Dolly's boxing, Harry exclaimed. Dolly has a small mark on his fist. This is what he found out after being beaten many times. What Dolly? This is given to me by Braun. Quote, Ronald said a little unhappily. I mean this pair is a lot like my cousin Dolly's. Harry replied, it's just that my heart is wary. How did Dolly's boxing suit end up in Braun? Could it be that Dolly was killed by him? No way, Braun wouldn't dare do such a thing. So where did he get the fist from again? And why give it to Ronald? Could it be that he found himself investigating him, suggesting that he should not be nosy? Harry couldn't help but think cranky. The more I think about it, the more I think it's possible. But you can't tell Ronald, otherwise Ronald will definitely be angry. Harry, Harry, ha, huh, what's wrong, Ronald, I mean, Hermione sent something that was stodgy. She actually gave me a book, still about the history of wizards. Obviously I grew up in a wizarding family, right? I don't know the history of wizards the same. Quote, Ronald first complained and then asked worriedly. Harry, I always feel that your face is not very good. Are you all right? It's okay. I'm probably a little frozen. Just take a break. Harry said this, but his vigilance against Braun was raised to the peak. On the other hand, Braun was already in the classroom trying out the new potion that Snape had taught him some time ago. I have to say that with the blessing of his new talent, his understanding of potions has indeed increased. What I didn't understand last time was understood after a few attempts. At the same time, he also succeeded in making a joy potion. As for Harry, Braun doesn't know anything about his brain. But even if he knew, it was just a laugh. He wasn't much interested in attending Dumbledore's savior training program. Since Harry is willing to think more, think more. Braun, you're here early. The Weasley brothers ran in grinning. It's not early, I think punctuality is a good virtue. The brothers laughed a few times and did not speak. Braun didn't blame much either. After putting away the potion's equipment, I also began to continue making hand warmers. While working, the three of them chatted casually. Braun, you're wearing a sweater too. George asked sharp-eyed. Braun nodded. Yes, Aunt Molly gave me a Christmas present. It was warm. The only bad thing is that she sends it every year. I already have a lot of pieces at home. Mom, it's always like that. You look at ours, we also knitted letters on our sweaters to make it clear. Quote quote. Fred pointed to his mail. F. If you don't always play the trick of confession. I don't think my aunt will be like this. Quote, the two brothers laughed and did not speak. They like that others can't tell them apart. Why are you still wearing a bracelet? George places the finished bottle in front of Braun, who injects magic into the spell carved into the spar inside. Someone else sent it. Braun muttered a few words. But the two asked a little hesitantly. It looks like breaking the casserole and asking the end. To make Braun a little embarrassed. Ginny. Ginny sent it. Ginny, why didn't she give gifts to her two older brothers? Fred protested rather dissatisfied. Okay, don't dwell on that. Making money is more important, isn't it? 
Braun said roundly. Humph. The two indignantly said nothing after a few words. I started to get busy again. Even lunch was eaten by bronze pie that he brought out of the kitchen in the morning. It wasn't until the sky was slightly dark that it was finished. It's finally over. Tired of me, Fred said, shaking his arm. Their task was to dye ordinary glass bottles black. It's not very difficult but it's quite energy intensive. It's time for dinner. Go together, Braun said by banging the bottles into a large box. By the way, where are these things? Let us there. We also have time to sell. By the way, how much are you going to sell? 20 copper nets. You guys decide, I don't know much about the price of these things. Quote. All right, it's good if you wait for our dividends at the end of the year. By the way, do you make an ecstasy brawn? I think there must be a market for this thing. Braun hesitated. This stuff is illegal. I remember that ecstasy agents could not be made and used casually. Can a wizard still be considered a wizard if he doesn't break the law? Just say if you can make it. Quote. Can't yet, but I guess it should be easy after contacting a few times. I can ask my father for the prescription. I think our family should have the most comprehensive love potion making method. Or just follow the method in advanced potions making. Okay then, I'll talk about it later. We're not in a hurry anyway. Fred shrugged. Then he carried the box with George to the auditorium. It's really heavy. That's right. If it weren't for the fact that the corridor didn't allow spells to be cast, I would have used the floating charm instead of carrying it like this. By the way, that old guy from Filch. His nasty cat is gone. I don't know. Let's hurry up and go to the auditorium. Quote. Braun urged. Of course he did what Filch did. He was invited to the Squib Union to attend an event. As for where this association came from. Recently, of course. The purpose is to better deal with the Ministry of Magic's ban on alienation potions. Although their struggle was successful, the Ministry of Magic abandoned the ban on alienation potions. Ministers will also miss out on their next seat. But the union was preserved. After all, no one knows what virtue the next minister will be. Filch, as the leader of the original march, is now a member of the association. This is also the reason why he laughs all day now and doesn't catch students much. I'm a committee member big and small. What other students are caught? Plunges. It is better to have that time to cultivate and cultivate your own alienated seed contact contact magic. Isn't that fragrant? Really? It's not you who carry it. Fred huffed and carried the box unhappily at Braun who was leisurely behind him. The Christmas dinner at Hogwarts was extraordinarily atmospheric. Especially in the auditoriums that were specially decorated by the professors of the academy a few days ago. Christmas tree mistletoe and so on are placed around the auditorium. The sky at the top of the auditorium also changed into a snowy atmosphere. From time to time, magically crafted snowflakes fall from the sky. It's just that they are not cold but slightly warm. After landing, disappeared. The four long tables in the hall have disappeared. In its place was a long, wide table. In the main seat sat Professor Dumbledore. Other positions are Professor McGonagall, Professor Hagrid Flitwick and others. Come and help me. As soon as Fred entered the auditorium, he yelled at Ronald and them. Then with their help, the boxes moved to the table and placed on the ground. Braun said hello to the crowd. Sitting next to Ronald. What's inside, Braun? Some gadgets. We use it to make money. Quote. Braun said casually. Pick up the pumpkin juice on the table and drink it. It feels a lot more comfortable. After a while, everyone arrived. Dumbledore knocked on the cup. Then the food came out. Hundreds of roasted turkeys with a golden appearance appeared on the long table. The bulging sacks inside are filled with various ingredients. Ingredients such as potatoes and corn are placed around the turkey. There are also many other foods besides turkey. Roast meat piled up into a hill and emitting a burst of aroma. Boiled soft glutinous potatoes, as well as sausage marinated meat and various jams. All were put on the table. And that's not the end of it. There are also piles of fiery red Christmas puddings and glasses of juice pumpkin juice. Oh my god, this is the first time I've seen such a big Christmas scene. Quote quote. Harry said with wide eyes as he looked at the mountain of food in front of him. You'll get used to it later. Ronald said something and ripped off a turkey leg and not it. Of course, no one will say anything about him. After all, 
the little wizards and teachers who stayed in the school had less than a hundred turkeys alone enough for them to eat. Braun cut a piece of turkey meat and tasted it. It feels like it tastes bad. The meat is woody and hard. This is still through the hands of house elves who are well versed in cooking magic. If you do it for ordinary people, the taste will definitely be worse. Braun finally understood why his family didn't eat roast turkey. Obviously roast goose tastes better than roast turkey. At least the meat is more delicate and delicious. On the pile of rotisserie at the table, a piece of roast meat that looks good is picked. Braun ate slowly. The posture is elegant and at the same time the speed is not slow. It didn't take long for a large piece of roasted meat with honey on the surface to enter his stomach. Shet, what is it? Percy scolded bitterly and spat out a saliva-stained silver sicko from his mouth. There is also a small tooth mark on the top of Yinksico, which shows how hard Percy's teeth were when he ate the pudding just now. A silver sycoon, Percy. You're so lucky. Ronald put down the chicken leg in his hand and said with some envy. Then also pick up a pudding and eat it with your mouth open. I hope I can eat a sicko. It hurts me. Almost choked my teeth. What a pudding with coins in it. Percy covered his cheeks and said with a hint of resentment in his tone. But that look is not so sad, but a little happy. A silver zyke is also a lot of money for him. Everyone is happily eating Christmas dinner, while the little wizards are talking and laughing, and Slytherin can get along with Gryffindor. Ravenclaw no longer mocks Gryffindor's recklessness and clumsiness. Everyone enjoyed the excitement of the festival to the fullest. The same goes for professors. I saw that the pointed hat on Dumbledore's head was casually clicked by him and turned into a women's hat that must be decorated with flowers and butterflies flying from time to time. At the moment he was listening carefully to Professor Flitwick's jokes, laughing from time to time. Professor McGonagall, who used to be serious and stodgy, was also red from drinking at the moment. From time to time, I touched glasses with Hagrid, who was drinking with a large wine tank. Both sides burst into hearty laughter. Bang! A few steps away from the dining table, a bunch of colorful bag firecrackers kept ringing. The Weasley brothers were excitedly pulling the lead of the firecracker, exclaiming from time to time. Compared to the Muggles' colorful bag firecrackers, the Wizards' colorful bag firecrackers are obviously more interesting. Inside are not simple paper hats and plastic toys but something more interesting. With the roar of firecrackers, several guinea pigs popped out of the firecrackers is squeaking and running around. It's very interesting. Some of the girls were taken aback. Of course, there are other interesting things. Braun, this hat is for you. By the way, there is also an eye patch. It's more like a pirate. One of the two brothers put a pirate hat on Braun and the other put an eye patch on him. And Ronald got his fake beard out of nowhere. Wear Braun's wizard robe when you're done. It is not as fierce as a pirate, but it is extremely funny. There is something nondescript. Make the little wizards around laugh. You guys are really enough. Braun said helplessly. I took off these costumes. Then the costume was forcefully worn on Percy by the two brothers. And don't forget to throw a piece of fat tongue toffee into his mouth. Provoked Percy to run after them with his big tongue stretched out and wearing a pirate hat. After playing crazy with everyone for a while, Braun didn't take the bunch of interesting toys. It's all left to Ronald. After saying goodbye to everyone, Braun left alone. To be honest, he is still a little unaccustomed to this kind of lively scene. Whether in his past life or now, he is a person who prefers to be quiet. What's going on? Braun thought with a frown as he looked at the moving stairs under his feet. Although the stairs sometimes change constantly. But most of the time as long as you are not in a hurry, it will not change chaos. This is a pattern he discovered during this time. Whenever he was anxious, the stairs would be chaotic and tricky. But when you are more at peace of mind, it will honestly stay there and not move, even if you keep thinking about where you are. The stairs will gladly take you there. Strange, how did you get me here? Quote. Braun thought with a frown. On the fourth floor, not only Braun's classroom for potions, but also the three-headed dog Neville is here. Is it difficult? Is Dumbledore trying to test me? Braun thought to himself, since, send me here. I'll just keep practicing potions. Anyway, it's okay to go back so early. Quote. While thinking, Braun walked to the abandoned classroom where he refined his potions. Skillfully opened the door. 
Then the eye was drawn to a simple and gorgeous mirror in the corner of the classroom. The mirror is large and more than two meters high. The surface is engraved with various patterns, and the border is gold. The lower end is supported by two claw-shaped brackets, which look a little weird. At the top of the mirror is engraved a string of letters, Arisdstreiruitubkafruitenwoshi. Aris Magic Mirror. Braun wondered. He has also heard of the great name of this mirror. As for the meaning of the above letters, according to the judgment of some big hands, it should be. What I show is not a mirror image of you, but the desire of your heart. But isn't that what Dumbledore used to test the Savior? And it's also the last level in the Philosopher's Stone Protection level. How did it get here? And combined with the movement of the stairs just now, Braun had to think more, which seemed to be what Dumbledore used to test himself. Braun knew in his heart. But I still couldn't resist the temptation in my heart. He also wanted to know what his heart longed for the most. He was also very curious about this. Slowly approach the mirror of Aris. Stand in front of it and want to see what will appear inside. But Braun found that this mirror, like a normal mirror, only had his own reflection in it. What's going on? Suddenly I thought of my own brain closure. Braun couldn't help but be shocked. After the brain closure was lifted, the mirror in front of him really began to change. I saw a black fog begin to appear in the mirror. The scene inside the black room has become clearer and clearer. A man who looks like Braun holds a wand in his hand. Countless wizards crawled on the ground in front of him. Is this the desire of my heart? Braun muttered. He thought there would be many scenes, but he didn't expect it to be such a picture. Is it disbelief in your own heart? Braun, maybe you can talk to me. A somewhat old voice said. Braun turned his head warily. Discovery Dumbledore didn't know when he came behind him. He was looking at himself with a smile. Hello, Professor Dumbledore. Braun said respectfully. Don't be inhibited, I always feel that you look a little scared when you stand in front of me. Dumbledore said with a smile. I'm just in awe of the strongest wizards of our time. Dumbledore did not answer, but asked with interest. What do you see in the mirror? I saw myself become the most powerful apothecary in wizarding history. It is even said that the elixir of immortality has been refined. Quote, quote. Ah, ah, this way. What a terrible desire. Quote. Dumbledore was clearly stunned by Braun's ideals and didn't know what to say. The look at this moment couldn't help but be a little surprised. Do you know what the elixir needs? Dumbledore said with a twinkle in his eyes. Braun is undaunted. Of course, sir. Philosopher's stone. I believe I will be able to refine a philosopher's stone one day. Then reach eternal life. Dumbledore was completely confused by Braun. Braun is a little too honest, honest is a little too much. But, well, Braun, very good idea. Step up your game, step up your game, I'm sure you can. Dumbledore pushed his glasses, somewhat embarrassed. Then the professor can tell me what you saw in it. Me, Dumbledore mused. Then he suddenly laughed and said, Woolen socks. There weren't enough socks to wear, but people kept sending me books. Actually, I don't like reading so much. That's it. Then the professor I went back to rest first. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Braun nodded and left. This time, the stairs did not change again. Instead, they honestly stopped there motionless. Let Braun go. Watch Braun's disappearing back. Dumbledore muttered. Turn your head to look at the mirror in front of you. I saw a cute little girl standing beside him in the mirror. In addition, there is a teenager with a face that is seven points similar to him. The three men were talking about something with a smile. Dumbledore took off his glasses and wiped the corners of his eyes. Really, every year, socks are always not enough. The day after Christmas, Braun went to the fourth floor to refine potions as usual in the morning. It's just that the mirror is gone. Looks like Dumbledore should be moved somewhere else. Braun didn't care, either, but immersed himself in the sea of potions. After lunch, Braun and Fred and others had an afternoon of snowball fights on the playground. It was a lot of fun. They didn't return to the lounge until the evening. After eating some Christmas cake brought from the kitchen, I went to rest. The Christmas holidays always pass quickly. Braun repeated the simple but fulfilling life for the rest of his vacation. Until the end of the Christmas holidays. On this day, Braun stayed in the library as usual to read a book. 
I have to say that the Hogwarts library is indeed very rich. You can find almost every kind of book. This made Braun very satisfied. Quote dot 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 quote. Hermione whispered. Braun put down the book and looked a little curious. What's wrong Hermione? What's going on? Hermione looked a little embarrassed but asked. Braun, do you know Nick Flamel? Hermione saw Braun pause. I thought he didn't know that he couldn't help but be a little disappointed in his heart. They searched all corners of the library during this time but could not find any relevant books. They even said they had begun to give up hope of finding Flamel in the library. Of course you know, that's my idol. I'm going to be like him one day. So, can you tell me? Hermione's voice was with some eagerness. Braun could tell at a glance that Hermione Harry had begun to explore what the three-headed dog was guarding. Nod. Nicolas Flamel was a 14th century French wizard and also a philosopher's stone refiner. Is the greatest alchemist. He is also a good friend of Principal Dumbledore. It is said that he must be more than 600 years old now. But still alive. Quote. Seeing Hermione's excited look, Braun asked with some curiosity. I remember Nicole Flamel on the chocolate frog card. And what do you ask him for? No, it's nothing. We are just curious. Quote, quote, you guys, who else? Ronald, Harry, Braun beg you not to ask. I don't want to deceive you but I can't tell you either. Hermione pleaded with some pleading. Braun stared into her eyes. Well, Hermione, if there is anything you can let me know. I'll help you. Thank you Braun. Hermione hugged Braun gratefully. So he ran to Harry with a red face. Some can't wait to share the news. Braun looked at the young wizards around him with an expression of not being able to die by scattering dog food. I couldn't help but feel a little happy in my heart. The corners of his mouth curved and he continued to look down at the book that explained the knowledge of the elements of magic. He thinks that the change in the nature of his fluorescent spell may be solved in this book. How? Ronald asked impatiently. Harry looked a little unhappy. Braun seemed unbelievable to him. AFDB. He didn't want Braun to know that they were tracking down Nicholas Flamel. Hermione nodded slightly and lowered her voice. Braun knew. He told me that Nicolaine was the greatest alchemist or a friend of Professor Dumbledore. Moreover, it is also introduced on the chocolate frog. Oh, that's right. It's the chocolate frog. Harry couldn't help but shout excitedly. Mrs. Pants angrily came over and reprimanded them fiercely. In the end, Braun's face did not drive them away but also let them promise not to shout in the library or let them out. As for why Braun was given face, then we have to talk about Filch. Mrs. Pants and Filch are somewhat related. Although Braun didn't know what the relationship was, Braun guessed that they must have seen some kind of relative. Because Mrs. Pants once thanked Braun for Filch's magic. After Mrs. Pants left, the three breathed a sigh of relief. Harry, why did you yell? Ronald said wistfully. The tone was very dissatisfied with Harry's yelling behavior. Although Harry said that he was reprimanded, he could not hide his excitement at the moment. Pulling out a chocolate frog card from Dumbledore, he pointed to the back and said, You see, Dumbledore and Nick Flamel have discovered new alchemical achievements. I'll just say where I've seen him. Hermione ignored Harry, who was rejoicing that he had seen the name. Run straight to the shelves in the library where wizarding history is stacked brought a huge heavy book over. It doesn't matter what the two say. The look began to rummage in earnest. That's it, the only maker of the philosopher's stone. Looking at the two of them with ignorant eyes. There was some helplessness in his expression. Don't you usually say that you don't read books? Without waiting for the two to be dissatisfied, he continued. Look, look here, Hermione said, pointing to the words on the book. The two people read curiously. The philosopher's stone, also known as the Philosopher's Stone, is a magical substance, which is also the wisdom crystallization of ancient alchemy. It can turn any metal into gold. It can also be used to make an elixir of life, so that those who drink this potion can never die. Over the centuries, countless alchemists have gone crazy about it. But without exception they all failed. Just as wizards began to question whether the Philosopher's Stone was real, the famous alchemist and opera lover Nicholas Flamel made the only Philosopher's Stone to date. And with this Philosopher's Stone to gain a long life. At the time of last year, Mr. Nicholas Flamel celebrated his 665th birthday. Now he is living in seclusion with his wife, Perinard.
to avoid countless wizards who come to ask for medicine. Quote. Oh my god, this stone is truly amazing. Countless gold. If only we had it at home. It's not so hard at home. Ronald said with some envy. Harry also agrees. I dare say that what Lu Wei guards must be this philosopher's stone. Nicole must have known that someone was trying to steal from him. Dumbledore was then entrusted with safekeeping. But why didn't he keep that himself? Isn't he hiding in a hidden place? Hermione rolled her eyes. Of course, because Dumbledore is the most powerful wizard in the wizarding world today. He was the one who defeated two dark lords. Also, I finally know why I can't find this person in modern wizarding studies. He was more than 600 years old. It will certainly not be classified as a modern one. Could it be Snape who said you were going to steal the Philosopher's Stone? I saw Snape go to the fourth floor and get bitten on his leg. Quote. Harry whispered. Harry, Snape is a professor. Although he is always a little prejudiced against you sometimes, you can't think of him so badly. Hermione was clearly upset that Harry had denigrated the professor. That's just for you and Braun. It's just bad for us. I think he hates me. Harry muttered quietly. And the last time we were on the Quidditch pitch, maybe Snape did it too. Did you say it was Hermione? Hear Ronald's inquiry. Hermione shook her head with some hesitation. Quote dot 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 quote. How could you not be clear, it's obviously you. Yes, I burned Snape's robe. But I also found that Professor Quirrell was also chanting mantras. And as soon as Professor Quirrell's mouth stopped, Harry stabilized. Professor Quirrell, how can it be? He's so timid. Harry looked at Hermione suspiciously, seemingly annoyed. Braun told you, I think he's definitely with Snape. You can't say that. Yes, Harry. Braun wouldn't, even if. Also blinded. Quote. Seeing that he was about to fall into a quarrel again, Harry sighed in his heart and admitted his mistake. Well, I was in a bit of a hurry just now. But I don't believe Professor Quirrell did it. I feel like he's fine. A conversation eventually broke up. However, as the weather got worse, blizzards have increased significantly. A new thing began to catch on in schools. That's right, it's bronze hand warmer. This thing sold well. Many little wizards go to buy. The price is not expensive 22 copper nats. It's a little more expensive than Braun expected. But it also sells very well. The only surprise was that these things didn't sell. Braun's vision was that the young wizards of the wizarding family should buy a robe with a thermostatic spell applied. But he still thought too much. The little wizards of wizarding families were not very wealthy. So most of them wore ordinary robes like the muggle wizards. Chapter 101. This is something Braun did not expect. So Braun and the Weasley brothers took advantage of their spare time to make another batch of hand warmers. This relieves the pressure of not having enough quantities. Of course, it is not without some senior students who want to copy a batch but give up after trying it out. Hogwarts does not teach alchemy. Some simple ones are just fine. But Braun's thing, though seemingly simple, couldn't have been made without enough research on fluorescent spells. Even if it is something that can be tried to imitate in other ways. Also gave up because the cost was too high. This also led to Bra, N, who had mastered his own business, to make a lot of money. 26 gold galleons and 8 copper gnats, oh my god, we made a profit. Fred shouted happily, George didn't look much worse. But Braun seemed much calmer. After all, after the distribution, I only have to take a few pieces. As a man with thousands of gold galleons, Braun has completely lost sight of such a small amount of money. Now that I think about it, I realize how ridiculous the idea of counting on making money to buy experimental equipment was. If you rely on this money to save yourself, you will have to save until the year of the monkey and the horse moon. Braun, we decided not to divide the money and put it into new research, do you think? Fred asked cautiously. After all, Braun has the largest shares. If Braun doesn't agree, they can't do anything about it. Yes, do as you say. Well, don't bother me and I'll have to keep practicing potions. Braun didn't care, and then kicked the two excited guys out of the classroom. Time didn't pass long. The second Quidditch match began again. This time it was Gryffindor versus Hufflepuff. To be honest, Braun didn't want to go. But how can it be that his own Dean Snape is the principal? Out of respect for the Dean, Braun attended. Sitting in the audience, 
Ron looked a little bored. However, a dispute not far away caught his attention. Who is this? Weasley poor ghost. Ronald glared at Malfoy and then looked nervously. Just now, Snape awarded Hufflepuff a free throw. Now the situation in Gryffindor is not good. Ronald was in no mood to quarrel with Malfoy. But Malfoy clearly didn't think so. He took Ronald's blindness as cowardice and began to mock wildly. Especially after Snape awarded Hufflepuff another free throw. This mockery becomes even more excessive. Let's look at the guys in Gryffindor's team. Oh, a bunch of little pitiful. Perhaps Gryffindor always gives priority to children who have a bad life or have no father or mother when selecting team members. Take Potter, for example, and the Weasley brothers. Quote. Oh yes, I forgot about you, Neville Longbottom, I think you should join in too. Because you don't have brains. Must be the most pitiful person inside. Neville, who was sitting in front of him, was red-faced. I originally wanted to endure the past, but I couldn't help but think of what Harry said to myself a few days ago. Neville, you're better than twelve Malfoys don't be afraid. A sudden courage surged in his heart, and Neville stood up and said. I'm no worse than you. Malfoy, I, I'm better than twelve of you combined. Neville stammered, whoosh, this joke is really funny. Forgive me though, I didn't want to laugh. Your empty brain is even more empty than the Weasleys, Vault. If you dare to say a word, I promise to teach you a lesson. Malfoy. Ronald said cruelly while staring at Harry who was constantly hovering in the air. I saw Harry suddenly dive down as if he had seen something. Rushed down, is it? Then I'm scared. I feel like Harry Potter must have found money on the ground, just like you can't see money without your eyes. Even if it's just a copper gnaw. Ronald couldn't stand it for a long time. At this moment, before Malfoy could notice what was happening, he pounced viciously. Then ride on top of him and throw him to the ground. Help me, Crab, Gore, Malfoy, who was under a sneak attack, was clearly no match for Ronald. At the moment, he was really next to Ronald's fist and kept calling for his follower to help. But before the two could rush up, they were stopped by Neville, who had climbed over his seat from the front. I, I'm not stupid, I'm going to teach you a hard lesson. Then they scuffled with the two. There was a cry of pain. Loose mouth, loose mouth, Goyle pull him away. Crab shouted as Goyle pulled Neville, who was biting his arm, away. But Gower was also panicked at the moment, not knowing what to do. Neville could only pull hard and did not let go. But the more he pulled Crab, the more he howled. It left him at a loss. I don't know what to do. Hermione let out a burst of screams. But this did not stop these boys who were fainting at the moment. Oh my god, look at it, grabbed, Harry Potter. The stands instantly boiled. One by one, they began to exclaim. Ronald, Ronald, we won, we won, Hermione shouted. But I didn't see Ronald left and right. Braun was also shocked. It was so fast that Harry Potter was able to finish the game in just a few minutes. Although Braun doesn't know much about Quidditch but he still knew that this was probably the fastest game in Quidditch history. As for Gryffindor's 60 points behind, 150 points after catching the Golden Snitch, he was instantly overtaken. Braun's eyes were drawn to Snape at the moment. It's really too suspicious that he looks now. His face turned pale and he pursed his mouth tightly. While Harry Potter was being thrown high and cheered by the crowd, he hurried away with his hood and ran towards the Forbidden Forest not far from the castle obviously trying to do something ulterior, especially after seeing Harry Potter follow. The curiosity in his heart finally couldn't be suppressed. He hurried out of the stands. Bring a hood in one corner and hurry away using the flotation charm. He hid under a large tree through the phantom curse. Siso, the leaves on the big trees swayed. Through the thick branches and foliage, Braun saw a nervous Harry. Braun followed his gaze to a clearing. There, Snape and Rocky stand opposite each other. Why, chosen here, Severus, Quirrell stammered in reply. At the moment, he was far more nervous than usual. I don't think it's appropriate to say what you think in a crowded place. Seeing that Quirrell did not answer, Snape continued to say coldly. I know what you're thinking. I don't think you should be like an enemy of me. At the same time, figure out who exactly you want to be loyal to. Looks like Snape has noticed something wrong with Quirrell. Braun thought to himself, 
Seeing Harry at the top of the tree, he couldn't help but flash some evil taste. A floating charm was used on the owl that had been resting. Scared the sleeping owl and shouted in horror. Then quickly escaped this somewhat strange place. Harry was so frightened that he almost fell. And the two people in the open space obviously heard and said nothing more. I'm waiting for your little trick. I'll keep an eye on you. After speaking, not waiting for Quirrell to say anything. He put on his hood like a bat, and quickly left the clearing. Quirrell was left standing alone. It's like a sculpture that doesn't move. Braun was afraid that Quirrell would find out and didn't stay long, so he walked away cautiously, trying not to make a little noise. Return to Slytherin's common room. Malfoy was covering his green eyes. And Crab, though the wound on his hand had been covered with herbs by Madame Pomfrey. But there were still cries of pain. I promise I'll kick Weasley out of school. My dad is a Hogwarts trustee. His words aroused the approval of some young wizards. However, most of the little snakes were still excitedly discussing the game just now. After all, Harry Potter was so good. Even the little snakes couldn't help but admire him. Where have you been, Braun? Daphne asked in a low voice. The hairpin given to her by Braun, the wearer on her head, clearly liked it. Beautiful, it seems that there is no problem with my aesthetic. Quote. Braun exclaimed. Daphne blushed. Ask you what's wrong. I went out to breathe in the atmosphere in the lounge I didn't really like. You know, I prefer quiet. Did you listen to Malfoy? He is going to have his father fire your cousin. So what, aren't you worried? Daphne, do you know what a school trustee is? The school director is the one who pays for it. As long as Dumbledore doesn't nod his head, no one has the ability to expel a student. Ignore Daphne, who is still doubting life. Braun went back to his dormitory alone and lay down. Time was much faster than Braun imagined. Before you know it, it's Easter. It's just compared to the lively and fun Christmas. The Easter holidays are much busier. Because the semester is coming to an end in two or three months. In order to prevent a young wizard from failing the exam and not being able to advance to the second grade. Teachers began assigning a lot of homework to the students. This also led to the library being full of sighing little wizards all day. I kept checking the information and doing my homework. The same is true of Braun, whose research is still not progressing. Now he has put this matter down first. Start preparing for the exam. Thanks to his hard work, he is much easier than most students. Coaxing. The floor trembled. Braun looked up from the sea of books. I saw a giant in a beaver coat walk into the library. It seems that Hagrid is dressed too sloppily to the displeasure of the librarian, Mrs. Pants. I'm afraid that those books she loves will be destroyed by Hagrid's rough big hands. Braun and Hagrid didn't know much so they continued to focus on their books without a few glances. Hagrid's appearance caught the attention of Ronald who was fizzily flipping through a book not far away. Hagrid, why did you come to the library? Ha, huh, nothing I just look for books. Hagrid's tone was evasive. Hide books you don't know behind you. Looking at the three of them sitting in the library looking for something, I was a little worried. Are you still in Chanico Flamel? Isn't it? I told you not to look it up. We figured it out a long time ago. Hagrid, shish. Hagrid quickly put his finger to his mouth and then looked around vigilantly. I couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief when I found that no one was paying attention. Don't shout. I told you a long time ago. Don't look it up. What are you trying to do? Harry hesitated. Hagrid, we actually have something we want to tell you about some levels outside of Luwe. Hagrid looked around warily again. Wait a minute you guys come to me. Stop talking about it here. And I won't tell you anything about the Philosopher's Stone. After speaking, he left mysteriously holding the book God. Looks like Quirrell is supposed to have given the dragon egg to Hagrid. Braun muttered as he looked at the three who left. The campus was calm for the rest of the day. There was no student frolicking in the hallway. Filch laughed all day long. The only exceptions may be Quirrell and Filch. Quirrell's face began to become more and more pale and stuttering for some reason. Snape, on the other hand, is getting more and more grumpy. In addition to Braun, even some Slytherin would be reprimanded by him during Potion's class. Not to mention Harry and Ronald. It can be said that he is suffering from Snape's ridicule all the time. He deducted points for various reasons. It made the two miserable. Another Herbology class. 
Braun follows Professor Sprout to meet the Devil Vine in the greenhouse. Look, guys, this is the Devil Vine, Professor Sprout said, holding up a pot with tiny vines. This vine is very entangled. It will grab creatures that come close to him and strangle them with vines. Very dangerous. Quote, saying that, Professor Sprout also brought his wand closer to the side of the Devil Vine, only to see that the vine was getting tighter and tighter. Grab Professor Sprout's wand deadly. Devil vines, like spiders, rely on touch. The more you resist, the tighter it will wrap around. But if you don't move, it will slowly let go of you. Of course, there are other ways than this. Do any classmates know? Mr. Foley, with fire, the devil vine grows in a dark environment all year round so it is afraid of fire. Very good, Slytherin plus 5 points. Mr. Foley is right. When you are entangled in the devil vine and cannot break free, you can release a small fire spell if the wand is in your hand. With that, a little fire lit up on the tip of Professor Sprout's wand. Then the devil vine, which was originally dead entangled, quickly released his wand as if he had encountered something terrible. Then cringe, the devil vine will quickly hug together after encountering fire. This is also one of the characteristics of the devil vine. Quote, Hermione, let's go see the fire dragon out of its shell in a moment. How precious this is, I dare say few wizards have seen such a scene. Ronald whispered, nope, there's more class next, we don't have time to look, and we'd be miserable if we were discovered. Hermione said absentmindedly while remembering the main points Professor Sprout had said. Stop talking, Malfoy is watching, Harry warned in a low voice. Not far from them, Malfoy was leaning over from time to time to listen to them. This made Harry a little worried. Okay, then we'll talk about it later. Professor Sprout stopped lecturing when he heard the bell ringing for the end of class. He said with a smile at everyone. The young wizards began to wander around the greenhouse. Because the greenhouse is full of harmless plants, Professor Sprout is also very reassuring to the young wizards. There was no stop, Braun instead focused on the Hermione trio. They are indeed too conspicuous. As soon as the bell rang at the end of class, the three of them couldn't wait to put down their shovels and hurried away. And Malfoy followed them. Braun thought about it but didn't follow. It's a little too early to step in. Let's wait. The three hurried across the field and towards the edge of the Forbidden Forest. There is a chalet. A tall giant was standing outside waiting for them with joy. Hagrid, Harry shouted excitedly. Hurry up, come on in, it's coming out soon. Hagrid enthusiastically led the three into the cabin. The dragon egg was no longer placed in the stove but on the table. A slender crack appeared on the white eggshell at this moment. From time to time, it trembled, as if something was coming out. There was a clattering sound. Get closer, Hagrid said softly. It seems that he is afraid of scaring the little creatures in the eggshell. The three of Harry held their breath. I saw a piercing clicking sound, and a small fire dragon came out of the eggshell. Shakily stood up. It's not so beautiful but ugly. A pair of bat-like wings with spikes on them. It's pitch black. There are horn bumps on the head, and a pair of orange eyes protrude outward. A sneeze in the nose erupts a sparkle. From time to time, he also opened his mouth wide to show his fangs. B. Hagrid reached out and touched the young dragon's head. There was joy in the tone. But he was bitten by the fire dragon and made a whining sound. It's like threats and warnings. But Hagrid doesn't think so. Oh my god, you see that I know my mother who knows it without it. Quote. Hagrid happily boasted to the crowd. Hagrid, are you sure it's not attacking? Hermione said with a little fear as she looked at the young dragon's grinning teeth. Of course not, it just likes me so much. I told. Hagrid looked at the window and couldn't help but change his face. The expression that was originally happy instantly collapsed. Rushed to the window. Everyone was surprised by Hagrid's expression. What's going on? Harry asked nervously. Someone just looked through the curtains. Harry hurried to Hagrid's side. It's Malfoy. I promise he heard our conversation. Then sneak along. Oh my god, Hagrid wasn't in the mood to keep the three of them here. After the three of them comforted themselves, they heard the class bell and hurriedly left. Ha, huh. Braun watched Malfoy excitedly talk to Crabguard about Harry, who was still pouting the same anger from time to time. It seems to have caught his handle. The expressions of the three Harry people were a little fearful. 
Looks like Malfoy found Hagrid's fire dragon. Braun said secretly in his heart. Braun help me. Shabini shouted not far from him. At this moment, his hand was entangled by a huge devil vine. Help me. It's going to kill me. With fire. You idiot. Shabini. Braun hurriedly ran over. No matter how he said that his roommate could not see death. Use the ignition charm to force the devil vine back. To the screaming Sabini breathed a sigh of relief. Reveal the joy of the rest of your life. Oh, Braun so much thank you. If you could listen carefully to Professor Sprout's lecture in class, I think you would be surprised. I think Mr. Foley is right, Mr. Shabini. Professor Sprout doesn't know when he came here. At the moment, there is some dissatisfied reproach. However, her personality was more gentle and did not say anything more. Thursday. Braun is doing experiments in a classroom on the fourth floor. Harry's group hesitantly pushed open the door and walked in. Is there something? But you guys wait a while, I have to finish refining this potion first. Braun glanced at them, then continued to focus on the crucible in front of him. Potions refining is not casual. It requires focused attention. Harry was just about to speak, but was stopped by Hermione. Motioning for him to wait for Braun to finish making before speaking. Harry endured even though he was a little anxious. Pour the agent from the crucible into a glass bottle. Braun was very satisfied with the sealing of them. After cleaning up, he turned his head and asked. What's the matter? Braun looked at Ronald's hand. Here. Harry said impatiently. Let go of Ronald who was pale behind him. What's wrong with you? Your hands oh my god. How did it come to this? Braun stared in amazement at his palm, which was twice as large. The surprise in his tone could not be concealed. Braun, help me. It hurts so much. Ronald said bitterly. Braun stepped forward to observe. I saw a string of fine tooth marks on the back of my hand. The wound is faintly green. How long has it been? B. The one bitten by the dragon, if I'm not mistaken, it's the Norwegian Ridgeback Dragon. Yes, Braun, how do you know? Hermione asked curiously. Braun Dang won't tell them he knows the plot. I'm a pharmacist. Then he took a silver potion from his suitcase and handed it to Ronald. Drink you will feel better after drinking. I said, you should have come sooner and now the wounds are starting to turn green. Quote. Ronald took the potion and drank it without hesitation. After drinking, he also touched his mouth. It tastes good, I feel a lot more comfortable and less painful. Braun rolled his eyes angrily. Broad spectrum potion, unicorn horns were added to it. Why don't you go to Madame Pomfrey? I think going to her is the best choice. We have some reasons. Harry replied evasively. Of course, he couldn't go to Madame Pomfrey, otherwise Hagrid's dragon raising would be leaked. If it weren't for Ronald, it would have hurt. They won't look for Braun either. He was always wary of Braun. Okay, Braun, let's go. Quote quote. Braun stopped them, holding a sharp scalpel in his hand. You, what are you doing here? Bloodletting, of course. Dragon's teeth are poisonous. You don't think that a bottle of medicine will be fine. But, but Madame Pomfrey. Ronald stammered, terrified at the cold glow of the knife in Braun's hand. Braun interrupted. That's Madame Pomfrey. She is a very good therapist. I'm just a half hanger. I can only deal with this kind of injury with a knife and release the broken blood inside. Quote. As if afraid that Ronald would not agree, Braun threatened. Of course, your hand must be dealt with in time, and if you don't want it, drag or ask Madame Pomfrey to stay with her for a few days. Oh my god, oh my god. Ronald turned white with fright. He didn't want to lose a hand. Then, come here, quote. Ronald held out his hand in fear. Braun softly comforted. Don't worry, I'm your cousin and I won't hurt you. Take it, drink it. What is it? Ronald asked with his tongue stuck out after drinking. I feel some tingling on my tongue. An anesthetic can make you less painful. Braun explained as he applied the potion to his hand. I don't feel it anymore, Ronald said with a big tongue. He felt numb all over and unconscious. Here I go, Hermione you help me. Braun commanded and looked at Ronald's hand with a focused expression. Use a scalpel to gently cut Ronald's skin. I saw that the original red blood had begun to faintly carry green. Ronald's hand was like a water ball with blood flowing out. Let the air smell fishy. Braun waited quietly. After finding that the blood turns to a normal color. 
Only then did he reach out to Hermione and take the small box she handed her. Braun picked out some powder from it by hand. Then sprinkle evenly on Ronald's hands. Then he poured a tube of red medicine into his mouth. Okay, just go to Madame Pomfrey's infirmary. What's still to go? Harry shouted with some anger. Braun frowned. Don't yell at me Harry, I don't owe you. Obviously you said that Ronald didn't have to go to the hospital. Two Quidditch victories immersed Harry in the praise of the crowd. Hearing Braun reprimand himself like this at this moment, I couldn't help but feel angry in my heart. Of course I said, but his condition is serious now. I can't guarantee that his hands won't be affected. Quote. Under Braun's staring gaze, Harry eventually retreated. It's just that there is still some resentment in his expression. Hermione hurriedly rounded the field. Well, we're all friends. Braun snorted coldly. Okay, take Ronald to the infirmary. His injuries were serious. Although I dealt with it for him, I can't guarantee that there will be no problems in other places. Quote. Seeing Hermione's desire to stop talking, Braun interrupted unceremoniously. Okay, I'm going to continue making potions. Don't bother me. Quote. After speaking, he didn't care about the three people, and stood in front of the crucible again with a focused look and prepared. Hermione bit her lip. In the end nothing was said. Together with Harry, he helped Ronald to the infirmary. When they arrived, Madame Pomfrey was giving a cold medicine to a cold student. After drinking, the student was sitting on the bench with two ears smoking. What's wrong with you? Hands, Madame Pomfrey. Hermione pointed to Ronald's hand. Hands, Madame Pomfrey observed. Bitten by a dragon, handled very well. Nothing was a problem. Broad spectrum medicine also has a white umami taste. What a luxury. Madame Pomfrey leaned over and sniffed and said with emotion. Braun said to show you what was wrong with other places. He says you're better at solving these kinds of problems. Quote. Braun, no wonder it's so extravagant. His medicine is good. I don't have to deal with it but I recommend staying here for a day or two just in case. Wait until the hand is fully recovered before leaving. Quote. After arranging a bed for Ronald and hurrying to help the other young wizards. Ronald, let's go first. Hermione and Harry bid farewell to Ronald. Ronald still looked confused at the moment and could only pull out a smile. Kind of promised. On the way back, Harry couldn't help but complain. Braun really. Hermione pursed her lips and didn't speak. But the expression actually looked a little lost. Saturday night, Braun got up alone, left the bedroom. Just in case, he also cast a phantom spell on himself. Sure enough, Braun found the sneaky Malfoy as soon as he came out of his bedroom. At the moment he was constantly looking at the clock in the common room. After realizing that the time was almost up, he got up and walked towards the gate. Braun followed behind him quietly without making a sound. Harry, watch I don't catch you this time. While muttering and looking around, he walked. In fact, he had already reported it to Filch. It's just that in order to see the excitement of Harry being caught, he decided to come out and see for himself. Why do you always feel like someone is following me? Malfoy looked behind him suspiciously. Only continue walking when you find that there is no one. But that scared Braun enough. I thought Malfoy had found something. Although not found, Braun was still wary of moving away. For fear of being discovered by Malfoy. Following Malfoy to the tower and hiding by the steps like him, he waited silently. Sure enough, it wasn't long before Braun heard heavy breathing and the sound of most animals hitting wooden boxes. There was nothing to do, but at this time, I don't know if a gust of wind came from there. Blew the cloak of invisibility off. Harry and Hermione and the large wooden box they were dragging were revealed. Malfoy jumped out excitedly and shouted. Aha, I got you, Harry, I caught you sending the dragon. Malfoy, Harry's face changed dramatically. Hermione isn't much better, either. The face is also very pale. I knew you were coming, I. Malfoy's pride didn't last long. Then I heard the sound of chanting a mantra. Faint, then a ray of light hit Malfoy. His originally erect body immediately softened like noodles. Fell to the ground, I think you should be a little more careful. Braun came out of the shadows. Braun, Hermione came with some surprises. What are you here for? Harry said without a good face. Braun is not used to him either. Wipe your problem for you, of course. Otherwise, who would run out in the middle of the night? 
Harry's face turned red. I want to go up and have a fight with Braun. Okay, I don't have time to deal with you. Trouble solved. I took Malfoy back. You can continue to deal with your business. With a wave of his hand, Braun dragged the sleeping Malfoy away. Harry, let's hurry up and send Nobo over. Harry took a deep breath and nodded. Okay, let's go up quickly. Harry and Hermione put on their cloaks again and carried Nobo up the steep spiral staircase leading to the tower. It wasn't until he stood under the cold night sky that he took off his invisibility cloak. The cool breeze only feels very refreshing. They waited for almost ten minutes. I saw four brooms descending from the sky on the tower. They tied the rope from the broom to the box and said goodbye to Harry Hermione. Singing and swaying away on a broomstick. Finally, this matter is finally over. We can get a good night's sleep. Harry said with some joy. During this time, he was tormented by Nobo's affairs all day long. I was afraid that Malfoy would go to snitch. Now I have finally got rid of this trouble. He couldn't help but feel joy in his heart. He chatted with Hermione and walked down the stairs. Then the expression of joy instantly froze on his face. At the bottom of the stairs, a woman in a lady's wizard's robe and a pointed hat stood there. Anger in his eyes. Next to him is a little boy wearing pajamas, looking aggrieved. Miss Granger, and Mr. Potter, I wonder what tricks you guys are playing. If it weren't for Mr. Longbottom, I wouldn't have believed you would have dared to come to the observatory in the middle of the night. Quote, Harry had just reflected that he had forgotten his invisibility cloak upstairs when he heard Neville sob. Sorry, Harry, I heard Malfoy was coming to get you. I ran out to give you a wake-up call. Harry hurriedly waved at him. But Neville clearly misunderstood. He said you have a fire dragon. I knew it was a lie. Quote, Talk about it. What's going on? Hermione trembled and didn't know what to say and stared at her slippers as if she was looking at something interesting. Harry did the same, keeping his mouth shut and not saying a word. But Professor McGonagall is clearly not going to let them go because they don't speak. I think it's simple. You made up a lie to trick Malfoy out of bed. But he was not fooled. On the contrary, your roommate, Mr. Neville Longbottom, believed that he had been deceived by you. To prevent you from being caught by Malfoy, he got out of bed and looked for you. I guess it's not a funny joke. Take a night tour in the castle in the middle of the night. It's dangerous. Sorry professor. Hermione bowed her head in shame. She was never punished by her teacher for making a mistake. This is the first time. Undoubtedly, this also made her very sad. I thought you would be sober, Miss Granger. Professor McGonagall said with hatred. You all have to pay for your actions. Gryffindor was deducted 50 points. Everyone. Quote dot 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 quote. All right, Mr. Potter. Now you all give me back to bed. Professor McGonagall said angrily. The trio bowed their heads and returned to Gryffindor's lounge under the watchful eye of Professor McGonagall. Needless to say, it will be a sleepless night for the trio. Because they know that tomorrow the news will be known to all the Gryffindors. They can't imagine what it would be like when someone else knew that Gryffindor's score was in the bottom one for reasons. Early morning, Slytherin lounge, Malfoy covered his head and looked at himself lying on the couch in the common room. I don't know what really happened yesterday. He was obviously going to catch Harry, how could he lie here? With doubts he came to the auditorium dressed neatly. And a large group of Gryffindors in the auditorium are gathered in front of the hourglass that records the house cup scores muttering something to each other. What's going on? Broken hourglass. Impossible. Yesterday was fine, and the scores of other colleges have not changed. Quote. What's going on? I remember yesterday we were second. How do you become the bottom one now? Malfoy certainly heard these comments. Hurried over. I saw that Gryffindor, who had originally gained a lot of points because of two victories in Quidditch, had now changed from second to last place and Slytherin's hourglass is still far ahead. Could it be that I reported Harry yesterday? Malfoy thought to himself, but why am I not impressed by that? What's going on? Braun thought hesitantly as he looked at Gryffindor's hourglass. He had obviously sent Malfoy back yesterday, and said hello to Filch. He was given bottles of alienation potions to practice his magic with peace of mind. Logically, Filch certainly didn't go after Harry. But why did Harry get so many points deducted for that? Could it be that they were still caught? Hermione, 
whose eyes were a little red and swollen, came in from outside. Braun walked up and pulled her out. What's wrong Hermione? Hermione didn't know if it was an inner grievance. At this moment, I heard Braun's question and cried. Braun coaxed for a long time to calm down. But even so, Braun still received a lot of scumbag eyes. Okay, what the hell happened? Tell me, Braun said softly as he stroked Hermione's hair. Braun, I, because of me and Harry and Neville we were deducted 150 points. Quote. Braun frowned. What's going on? Is it Filch? I told him not to come out. Quote. No, not Filch. It's Professor McGonagall. She grabbed Neville and blocked us again. Quote. Professor McGonagall, what about your invisibility cloak? I remember, didn't Harry have an invisibility cloak? We're so happy we forgot to wear it. Braun. So the three of you were deducted 50 points each. Hermione nodded and then couldn't help but sob. Apparently the deduction of points yesterday affected her too much. Braun sighed. I see. Go back to dinner. I'll find a way to help you. Quote quote. I don't have an appetite. No, you have to eat without appetite. How to do without eating. Okay, let's go back. It's time for class in a minute. Things always go fast. Before class started at noon, word spread about it. Harry Potter ideographic period. A great hero of the wizarding world and an excellent seeker in two Quidditch matches. Two of his friends caused them to lose so many points. Harry Potter, who was originally popular in school, suddenly became a figure that everyone feared to avoid. Not to mention Gryffindor, even Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw don't have a good face for him. Because Gryffindor's score this year is second and the gap between first place is not particularly large. There is still hope for the Academy Cup. But because the scores of these three people suddenly became the reciprocal. Their hope of defeating Slytherin is gone. And how can it not be angry that? And so it goes, wherever Harry walked, he was pointed at by others. The same is true for Hermione, of course. I would have said she and Slytherin were close. Maybe she's Slytherin's purpose is to make us lose the house cup. Hermione listened to these discussions, silently lowered her head and did not speak. He walked towards the classroom stunned. Of course, there are people talking and some people cheering. That's the case with Slytherin. Whenever they saw Harry, they would applaud. Thanks to you Harry Potter. Otherwise, we're going to waste some effort to get the house cup. Yes, Harry Potter, you've made Braun a lot easier. No need to earn extra points from professors in our house for every class. Thank you, Potter. From time to time, cheers like these come from Slytherin's students. In their opinion, even Braun will not fight for points for them next. This year's Academy Cup is also stable. And all of this has to be said to be because of Potter's help. Don't worry, after a while they forget. Quote quote, Ronald comforted beside him. His hands are already well. After only one night in the school infirmary, he was kicked out by Madame Pomfrey. At dinner time, the little wizards came to the restaurant one by one. Look at Hermione with red eyes on the Gryffindor table. Braun stood up. Of course he had heard those discussions. Some small snakes even showed him adoring glances. Braun can only say that the imagination of these little snakes is really rich. Knocked on the cup, Braun attracted the attention of many people and saw that people were looking at him. Braun cast a spell on himself, so that all the little wizards can hear. Hello, I think everyone knows me. My name is Braun. Today I want to say something. Something about my friend Hermione. Quote. Seeing Hermione looking at herself with some concern, Braun gave her a reassuring look. First of all, I want to tell you, Hermione Miss Granger is not what you think Slytherin's treacherous. Braun was interrupted before he could finish his words when a grumpy Gryffindor could finish his sentence. If it weren't for her, how can our college deduct points? She's Slytherin's treacherous. The rest of the Gryffindors followed suit. Braun sneered. What if Hermione deducts points? Even if she deducts points, you are not qualified to denigrate her. How many points have you scored for Gryffindor? The grumpy Gryffindor was about to say something but was speechless when he heard Braun's question. He certainly didn't fight for Gryffindor for points, but he deducted a lot. I know him, his name is Builder. The previous month had been deducted for casting spells in the hallway. Buckle more before. A fellow of Builder, Slytherin, debunked. This made Builder a little annoyed. So, that Hermione that. And who are you? 
What qualifications do you have to ask me? Who do you think you are? Hermione, as far as I know this semester, has at least earned Gryffindor no less than 40 points. I think she fought for Gryffindor at least 60 points. Otherwise, why did you, who were counted down in previous years, suddenly become the second-ranked score this year? I remember Ravenclaw in previous years. As soon as Bronze words came out, some of the little lions started talking. I remember Hermione as if she could give the professor extra points in every class. Yes, I remember it too. Some of the eaglets also talked about it. They are the most knowledge-oriented. Of course, I also know that Gryffindor is such a clever little witch. Braun ignored their discussions, looked at Builder and sneered. As for who I am, I think someone will tell you. The Slytherin who just spoke said in a particularly doggy manner at the moment. Braun is the most famous heir to the Foley family. He is also a potions genius, making and developing alienation potions. Hailed by many potions masters as a once-in-a-century potions genius in the wizarding world. Also a reserve of the Order of Merlin and nominated for the Order of Sir Merlin Third Class. He is also known as the youngest nominee of the jazz group today and the most promising recipient. Quote, quote. With that Slytherin sudden words. It wasn't just Bild who was shocked. This is even more true for other little wizards. Braun's resume is too eye-catching. Not to mention a first-year little wizard even a graduated wizard is not eligible to receive the Order of Sir Merlin. Braun was nominated at a young age. And listening to that meaning, it seems to be stable. How can this not shock everyone? Merlin's pants, is that what Slytherin said true? It must be true. This kind of thing must be known as soon as you check it. Won't lie casually, but it's also terrifying. He's only in first grade. There are always some geniuses in the world. Braun nodded approvingly at that Slytherin. With a smile, he said. Now you know who I am. I think the status of a Sir Merlin nominee may be qualified to ask you. Quote, quote. Where does that Gryffindor dare to speak? There was some fear in his eyes. He wasn't as naive as the little wizard in the first grade. Knowing that people like Braun can't afford to offend themselves. So after hearing Braun's sarcasm, he could only bow his head and dare not speak. Braun didn't want to waste time on him either. Glancing at the little wizards in the hall, they snorted coldly. So, if someone goes to spread rumors in the future, I thought I'd talk to him. After speaking, he sat down without looking at everyone. The little snakes around them flickered their eyes. If someone else had shielded their rival Gryffindor like this, they would have gotten angry. But Braun is different. It is not to betray the snake yard and run to the lion yard. It's just a voice for a little witch in the lion house. No big deal. The Foley family is now thriving, forming alliances with many ancient families by selling potions. As the son of Foley, Braun is a rising star in the wizarding world with unlimited potential. If such people do not stammer, will they not learn from those reckless lions to offend? It's not just about stuttering. They, Qian Nuo Zhao, also plan to write letters to their families. I plan to let the family close to the Foley family tree as soon as possible. Even if you can't get close, you can't learn from the idiots of the Parkinson's. Now those fools are miserable by the Foley family. The family business that was hard to accumulate is about to be lost. Now he can only survive on the protection of the Malfoy family. It is impossible to be independent. In the future, he became a follower like the Crab and Boyle family and lived on the Malfoys. So the rest of the time, the other three table wizards were silent or talking in low voices. At Slytherin's table, snakes gathered around Braun to compliment. I want to make an impression in front of Braun. It was since Braun said that. It's been two months. Nothing happened in those two months. Because of Braun's words, some of the little lions who originally had malicious intentions towards the hairy three. Say nothing more. Because Braun is right. They basically deduct points for Gryffindor, where did they fight for points? Even Neville fought for 10 points for Gryffindor in Herbology class. When no one said anything, they could comfortably accuse Harry of causing Gryffindor to lose his qualification for the House Cup. But after being broken by Braun, they didn't have the face to blame others anymore. But even so, Harry and others have also stopped a lot during this time. Study honestly one by one. No longer so much curiosity. It was Hermione, because of Braun's words that night. The tenderness in his eyes was almost overflowing. 
The little daughter's posture also became more and more. It's no longer always grinning like it used to be. However, it is also much more low-key, and no longer rushes to answer questions as before. It's about learning silently. It seems that those people still have a great influence on her. Braun could only sigh about Hermione's current appearance. Then he took more and more care of her. Originally, things slowly calmed down. But a week before the exam, the calm disappeared again. Listen to me, I swear I heard Professor Quirrell. He was sad, but Snape was happy. I think Snape must have gotten the Philosopher's Stone. It has nothing to do with us, we should study hard. Then get a good score and get out of here and go home to enjoy the holiday. As for the matter of the Philosopher's Stone, maybe we should look for Dumbledore. We should have done so long ago. Quote, Hermione said without looking at the book. The last incident affected her a lot. She vowed never to take risks again because of her curiosity. And, it was more comfortable for her than with the reckless Harry and Ronald or with Braun. Ronald looked at Hermione, who had begun to dress up and was falling into a fantasy. Sighed, Hermione is no longer in the mood to risk us. And, Harry, I think Hermione is right. We shouldn't take any more risks. Last time Braun stood out for you to make people stop saying anything. But not necessarily this time. I can't guarantee that Braun will continue to be like last time. We don't need Braun. Ronald's words were unceremoniously interrupted by Harry. He became more and more bad at Braun's senses. Especially the last time Braun clarified for Hermione and not for him. Add to that the intimacy of Braun and Snape. He always thought that Snape must have something to do with Braun if he could get the Philosopher's Stone. Well, we don't need Braun but what if we get caught again? I think we would have to be fired at that point. Ronald's words seemed to touch on Harry's worst fear. He couldn't help but shut his mouth. Hogwarts was the most comfortable he had ever had in years, what would he do if he was expelled? He was not an adult, and had to return to the Desleys to live in the small closet. Hungry and full every day, living hopelessly. So the three fell silent. Once again, invest in the time of Potion's knowledge and Goblin Rebellion. Early morning the next day. The three Hermiones each received a note. The content of the note was very uniform that they were told to go to Filch at 11 o'clock tonight to put them in confinement. I forgot I still have confinement. Harry said a little dejectedly. This is the punishment we deserve. Hermione said calmly. 11 o'clock in the evening. Hermione Harry and Neville arrived in the foyer. Filch was standing there with some impatience in his eyes. Okay, let's go. I'm going to take you to your confinement. What a waste of time. Why can't you get into less trouble? That way I have more time to practice magic. Quote, impatiently, Filch led the three of them towards the outside of the castle. Since he acquired the magic, he has been much less interested in taking students into confinement. If not for Professor McGonagall's request, he didn't want to run out at night. Hurry up, go faster, Filch urged. I really don't know why Filch is in such a hurry. Harry muttered a few words. Neville, on the other hand, was sobbing, apparently terrified of confinement. Filch, you guys came pretty fast. Hagrid was surprised. According to what he knew about Filch, this old squib should have scared these students on the road. Filch came so quickly to disrupt his plans. He could only quickly carry the arrow barrel and take the bow and arrow. Do you feel relaxed? Filch looked at Harry darkly. I guess you think you're going to do some simple work with that idiot. But alas, the place you are going to is the Forbidden Forest. I hope I can see you again tomorrow. Filch's words made the three of them turn a little pale. The Forbidden Forest is a dangerous place. Not only did Dumbledore say this, they also learned about the horror of the Forbidden Forest from the mouths of the seniors. Okay, don't teach them any more lessons. Your mission is complete, and now I'm in charge. Humph, do you think I want to come? I wish these annoying kids could honestly stay in their rooms and sleep so I wouldn't have to come out every night to make rounds. After speaking, he hurriedly left without looking back. How did this old squib become like this? Hagrid muttered a few words and didn't care about Filch's changes. Instead, he said hello to Harry and Hermione. It seems to see that the three of them are a little scared, and Hagrid comforted. Don't worry, Tooth and I will protect you. Hagrid, what are we going to do tonight? Harry asked boldly. Hagrid didn't speak, pointing to a silvery-white shiny water stain not far away. 
See, that was unicorn blood. There must have been a bad guy in the forbidden forest. He's hunting unicorns and all we have to do is catch him. Well, in order to improve efficiency, we will divide the army into two ways. Neville you and Tooth. Hagrid, I'm with Tooth, Neville is less timid. Hermione said proactively. Hagrid looked at Hermione and hesitated. Well, then Hermione remembers shouting that I'll hear it when she encounters something. Let's go along this path and we will find the unicorn in hand. Quote. Hagrid beckoned everyone towards the path leading to the dense forest. The forbidden forest was swarthy, and there was not even the sound of insects in the silence. Hagrid they came to a fork in the road of a sheep's gut path. AFDB okay, let's separate over here. Hermione be careful. Quote quote. Hermione nodded without the slightest fear. After watching Hermione walk towards the road on the right, Hagrid did not stop to take Harry and Neville to the left road. Braun, are you still there? Holding her teeth, Hermione asked towards the air beside her. This scene looks very strange. But what's even weirder is that the air also talks back. Of course Hermione, I always am. As he spoke, Braun appeared beside Hermione. Woof, barking. Tooth was taken aback by the sudden appearance of Braun. The timid one can't wait to leave and flee here at the moment. Oh, Jerry's dead fish eyes stared at the teeth on the ground, looking very disdainful. Braun, Hermione hugged her excitedly. Why are you here? I don't worry about you. Smelling the gardenia scent emanating from the ends of Hermione's hair, Braun replied softly. Jerry, who was lying on Braun's shoulder, was very knowledgeable and did not scream. Instead, he jumped on Braun's head and stared into his own eyes, not knowing what he was thinking. But the teeth are obviously not as interesting as Jerry. Maybe it's fear or maybe it's resentment from a single dog. At the moment, it is screaming non-stop. Braun patted Hermione's back and comforted the panicked Hermione. Okay, let's move on. Maybe you can find some clues. Quote. Braun and Hermione followed the blood trail in the Forbidden Forest, watching more and more blood stains. Hermione couldn't help but ask. Braun, do you know why that bad thing hurts a unicorn? I read in books that unicorns are the purest creatures. Quote. Braun was silent for a moment. Do you know what unicorn blood does? Blood, there are only unicorn feathers and horns on the book. Feathers capable of making potions horns can be used as potions reagents. Yes, why isn't the role of unicorn blood written in the book? Hermione couldn't help but ask curiously. Because horns and feathers are things that unicorns can shed naturally. But blood is not, and the unicorn's blood is too tempting. Those who have drunk can get life. Get life. Hermione asked again a little confused. Unicorn blood gives life to people who are dying. But this has a terrible price. The moment blood enters the mouth, life will be only half left. And he will be cursed to become half alive. That means someone wants to live through the blood of a unicorn. Braun nodded. Neither of them spoke for the rest of the journey. As you go deeper into the forest, the trees become denser. The path is also basically impassable. Braun pulled Hermione who still wanted to move forward, and whispered. Be careful, there's too much blood here. I think what we're looking for is getting closer. As he spoke, Braun pulled his wand out of his arms and became wary. Drink it, Braun pulled out the potion and said. What is it? Hermione asked suspiciously as she drank it. Braun looked around warily, light body elixir. If there is danger, we can escape quickly. Quote quote. While speaking, Braun also drank a bottle. Potion entrance a fresh breeze lingered around Braun. There's a white thing, Hermione said sharply pointing to the open space not far away. The two approached cautiously. A holy creature with long, spiral-shaped horns on its head resembles a horse but is lying in a pool of blood. But look at its motionless body with sad eyes. It's beautiful. Braun muttered. The unicorn in front of him was white all over, and its body fell on the dark fallen leaves like a pearl. The shimmer emanating from the body is even more, highlighting its extraordinary. Hermione wanted to move forward. Stopped by Braun. Pulling Hermione low, her body hid behind the grass. Seriously, something is coming. As soon as the words fell, a black shadow with a hood sprang out of the grass. Like a wild beast, it crawls forward and watches vigilantly from time to time. Gradually approached the unicorn's thigh and sucked on the wound. Run Hermione. Don't stay here, quote, 
Before Bron could finish his words, Tooth barked and ran outside without looking back. Silly dog, Bron scolded. Faint, it's all petrochemical. Go. After releasing the two spells, Bron did not look at the results. Pulling Hermione and running through the jungle. Thanks to the light potion that helps them quickly, even in the intricate forbidden forest, they will not trip over. The hooded freak behind him let out a cry of pain after being hit by Bronze spell. But he screamed as if he was not affected. Both sides have always maintained an appropriate distance. Bron, on the other hand, casts a spell behind him while using his wand to emit red sparks like Hermione to attract Hagrid's attention. Bang! The cloaked monster was hit by a horse that came from nowhere. Disappeared into the forbidden forest. When the horse walked into Bron, he realized that it was not a horse, but a human centaur. The centaur has long white blonde hair. Semi-naked. The part of the horse's body is a horse with a silver mane. Are you all right? The horse man came out of the shadows with a bow and arrow on his back. It's okay. Thank you so much, Bron said gratefully. Although he is sure to deal with it alone, Firenze has undoubtedly helped him a lot. Nothing. It's too dangerous here. The Forbidden Forest was not very peaceful during this time. I think you should come back to Hagrid. Quote, the centaur looked at Bron with sky-blue eyes. By the way, my name is Firenze. I'll escort you little wizards. I'll take you to Hagrid. Oh, of course. Thank you very much. Bron doesn't have the face of the protagonist Harry to let Firenze carry him on his back. He can only follow Firenze with Hermione. Firenze. A horse man with black hair and a rugged body ran out of the forest. He looked a little angry. You shouldn't be here Firenze. You should stay in the tribe. I saw these foals in danger. I'm here to help their bane. Firenze said calmly. We swore that the centaurs only observed the planet's laws but we didn't go back and interfere with it. Bane angrily gouged the ground with his hooves. Maybe Firenze is just acting with good intentions. Want to help a foal lost in the forest. Quote. A sad-looking centaur beside him muttered as he stared at the sky. They're not foals. They are wizard cubs. There is no difference. The tradition of the centaur people tells us to help the foals. Okay Bane I'm going to send them to Hagrid. It's not safe to have that thing in the forest. After that, Firenze didn't wait for Bane to reply and ran away with the two. Why is Firenze always so stubborn? Can't he care about the stars as much as other tribesmen? Bane said a little angrily. I don't know, but Mars is bright tonight. Ronan looked at the stars in the sky and murmured. It was as if nothing could attract him any more except the stars. Firenze, why is Bane so angry? And do you know who the cloaked man is? Hermione couldn't help but ask curiously. But Farron did not speak. Instead, they rushed silently. Hermione thought Firenze didn't want to speak, but when passing by a thick bush, Firenze suddenly stopped. Do you know what unicorn blood does? Giving life to the dying is also cursed for it. Firenze was a little surprised. That's right, curses are cursed and have more impact than the life force obtained. It's a very worthwhile thing. Quote. Then why? Why do you even want to drink it? That means that the person's purpose is not to live but to make themselves more alive. The purpose is for something else that can give people a long life. Quote. Philosopher's Stone. Hermione screamed, it seems that Bron did not understand and apologized. I'm sorry Bron, I hid it from you. But Harry and I suspect that Lu Wei is guarding the Philosopher's Stone. Bron waved his hand indifferently to show that he didn't care. Hermione breathed a sigh of relief. That's right, a guy who has been hiding in the dark for so many years and has been thinking about a comeback. Perhaps no one but him would be so desperate for life. You mean Voldemort? Hermione asked hesitantly. Before he finished speaking, he felt a tremor on the ground and a big man ran over. How, are you all right, Hermione? Hagrid raised his voice. Then he thanked Firenze. Thank you Firenze, nothing. The horse man whispered, watch Firenze leave. Hagrid turned to Hermione. What's wrong? What just happened? Just now I am. As soon as he turned his head, Bron was gone. But the touch in her hand let Hermione know that Bron was still by her side. And what, just now I found a strange man sucking the blood of a unicorn deep in the forest with Tooth Tooth. Its body was not far ahead. Thanks to Mr. Firenze for saving me. Quote. Yes, Hagrid muses. Take me to see. 
Hermione nodded and hesitated. Hagrid, the teeth will be fine. Hagrid waved his hand indifferently while being wary. The guts of the teeth are small. Don't worry about it, maybe by this time it will have run back to the cabin. Quote. The crowd came to the unicorn corpse. Look at the unicorn on the ground. There was some sadness in Hagrid's eyes. What a pure creature. Someone was willing to kill them. Come, bury it with me. Hermione and Harry Neville followed Hagrid to dig a large hole in place. Hagrid then puts it in a pit and buries it again. After doing all this, Hagrid took them out of the Forbidden Forest. At this moment, the sky is already dark. Goodbye, Braun. Today is Saturday and a good rest. Get ready for the exam next week. Braun hugged her and said softly. What are you doing, Hermione? Harry asked standing in the foyer suspiciously. Obviously didn't understand why Hermione was talking into the air just now. Feeling that Braun had left, Hermione couldn't help but feel a little stunned. Ha, huh, it's nothing. I'm probably a little tired. Let's go back to the lounge and rest. Harry nodded suspiciously. But I always felt that Hermione was hiding something from Hermione. Back in the common room. I saw Ronald sleeping soundly in a chair by the fire. Harry couldn't help but be a little moved. It seemed that the cold wind brought in from the opening of the door, which made Ronald shiver. Rubbing his eyes, he found Harry and the others standing in front of him and said happily. Harry, I'm glad you're okay. I heard that you went to the Forbidden Forest to scare me to death. Harry excitedly told his pot friend about the Forbidden Forest. It gave Ronald a desire for adventure in his eyes. I can't wait to go to the Forbidden Forest myself. By the way, Hermione, what did you see? I see Firenze has a lot to say to you. Hermione hesitated. Firenze says that the cloaked monster is most likely Voldemort. Ronald and Neville were terrified. Don't, don't mention that name. Neville said fearfully. Ronald was not much better, and nodded approvingly, fearing that he would be arrested by Voldemort if he said the name. Quote dot 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 quote. Harry, well, is that person really a mystery person? Harry asked excitedly. Hermione shook her head. I don't know, but Firenze told me that only mysterious people are so desperate for life to make a comeback. He drank the unicorn's blood for something else that gained life. Philosopher's Stone. It must be the Philosopher's Stone. Snape wants the Philosopher's Stone to help the mysterious man in the forest. Let him make a comeback. Harry clapped his hands excitedly. As if everything made sense. Snape wanted the Philosopher's Stone not for money but to help Voldemort make a comeback. Okay Harry, I think we should go take a break first. You don't have to worry, Bolt. The mysterious man won't hurt you, and everyone knows he's afraid of Dumbledore. Now Dumbledore was at the castle and he didn't dare to come over. Hermione looked at Harry with some trepidation and couldn't help but comfort. As if afraid that Harry would not listen, Hermione added. Harry, we can't act recklessly anymore. That's dangerous, and we can't let schools deduct points anymore. Quote. Hermione's words turned Harry into a deflated ball. Harry sighed. Well, I will. I'll go rest now. Braun returned to his bedroom refreshed. Then change into pajamas and lie on the bed. Closing his eyes, an information box appeared in front of him. The cooling behind the info box made Braun very happy. I can't help but fantasize about what I can encounter this time. Please select talent. Parseltongue, pioneer, destitute. Apostates, two golden talents, bronze eyes twinkled. This was the first time he had encountered such a situation. It seems that something came to mind Braun couldn't help but ask. Can I choose a talent to replace a talent after the simulation? It took almost five minutes for Braun to get a reply. Yes, the host requirement did not violate the rules. That's good. Braun breathed a sigh of relief and then got excited began to take a closer look at the two golden talents used as 897. Pioneer Golden, as a pioneer you can always be at the forefront of the times, and your inventions and creations will create new systems for future generations. As a pioneer, you are not bound by those who came before you. No matter how long it takes you to remember. Let's move forward, Lone Climber. Apostasis Golden, the gods need faith, and progress requires doubt. As a person who has turned his back on the gods, you will not be bound by faith. But you will also be disgusted by divine creatures. Doubt is the ladder of progress. 
Braun always felt a little cloudy when he looked at the introduction of these two golden talents. I don't quite understand what this means. But he didn't bother for long before he finished his choice. I choose Parseltongue, Apostate, and Pioneer. Talent selection completed. Now for the simulation. The simulation begins. Braun appears in front of a village with a strong Mediterranean style. You were born at the age of zero. Your mother died because of lack of nutrition. Opening square bracket dot 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 closing square bracket. At the age of five, you met a sea snake, but strangely you were able to communicate with it. You told your father but he didn't rejoice but had fear in his eyes. At the age of six, your father stopped talking about communicating with snakes in order to make you more productive. You are sent to church to study. With amazing talent, you will soon be able to memorize the texts of the God of Light. Opening square bracket dot 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 closing square bracket. At the age of nine, you begged the pastor of the church to become a full pastor, but the pastor unceremoniously refused you on the grounds that you still had to give and suffer. But you know in your heart that it's just an excuse for a pastor. Because the one who replaces you has an uncle who is a viscount. You feel sad, but in order to fulfill your father's expectations you decide to endure. At the age of 10, you recite the light texts and communicate a huge consciousness between trances, and you faint. When you wake up, you find yourself able to use a beam of light power. You are very happy that you have finally lived up to your father's expectations. But before you could be happy, your father was seriously injured in an accident while fishing at sea. But you didn't give up because you knew that just by becoming a full-fledged pastor you would be able to heal him with divine power. Once again, you go and plead with the pastor. But he still failed the pastor exam. You show your divine power to the fullest but not get the priest's appreciation makes him impatient. Listen to your friends of the same class say that you did not succeed because the baker's son gave the priest 20 silver coins. So once again you are eliminated. You are so angry that you can't do anything about it, and you come home to find that your father has just finished bloodlebotomy. You feel helpless, but there is no way to use that trace of divine power to make your father more comfortable. Seeing your expression, my father understands that you are once again disqualified, but he is not disappointed but comforts you that everything is God's arrangement. And just like that, the father died. You can't understand why a devout man like your father has never been blessed by the God of light. And those who are qualified by mean means are able to use divine power. For the first time, you feel angry at the great God's inspiration. You follow ancient traditions. I put on a raft for my father, hoping that my father's soul could roam on the sea as he did before his death. Born in the ocean and died in the ocean. While sorting through your father's belongings, you accidentally discover that you are a wizard. This can't help but make you feel panicked in your heart. You are terrified and terrified of this. You have lost faith in your heart. At the same time, the moment you lose faith, you feel a vigorous force rushing up your body. You understand by reading books that you have officially become a wizard. 11. You pack your bags. Be prepared to get away from this village. Because you are constantly worried about being discovered by the pastor. The night before you leave, you have a neighbor's girl who has admired you since childhood. You didn't grant her request to let you take her away. You know that as a wizard, you will not have a peaceful life with you. And so you left. At the age of 12, you saved an old man on the road who was unconscious with only one eye left. You feel very pitiful and take care of him with your heart. When the old man woke up, he was overjoyed to find out that you were a wizard. And tell you that he is also a wizard but is wanted by the church. He asks if you would like to become his apprentice. You hesitate for a moment and choose to agree. In the cave, the old wizard taught you a lot. However, he was seriously injured and eventually passed away. You feel sad but instead of crying, you bury it. Hit the road again. You don't know what you're going to do just wandering aimlessly. At the age of 13, after getting the inheritance of the old wizard, you continue to study magic and you can always have all kinds of whimsy. Opening square bracket closing square bracket. 16 years old. Because of the lack of inheritance, you have reached the bottleneck period. Confused you are back in the village again. The village has not changed from when you left. You come home to find a beautiful girl cleaning up your house. You recognize her, Casey. You who have been able to perfectly hide the magic of control. There was a surge of excitement in my heart. You decide to propose to her. 
so you were naturally together. For the sake of your wife you decided to forget about the identity of the wizard. Live like a normal person. You inherited your father's business and became a sailor. At the age of 17, you rely on the wizard's ability to get a lot of fish every time you go out to sea. This makes your life richer and richer. Every time you see your wife's sleeping face, you feel that life seems to be good in the past. At the age of 18, your wife is pregnant. This will surprise you. In order to be able to have a richer life for your wife and unborn child, you decide to go to sea again this time to bring back the treasure of the sunken sea you have found. You pack your bags. He told his wife to rest assured at home and ask her neighbors to take care of her. And so you go to sea. There are always all kinds of accidents at sea. The original 20-day trip to sea took you a month to return. But the joy is that you succeeded in bringing the treasure. Sitting on the boat, you seem to see the smiles of your wife and children. When you enter the village, you find that many people look at you with dodgy eyes. You feel strange, there is a sense of crisis. You no longer greet the villagers and hurry home. But it's not your wife who is waiting at home. It's a disheveled corpse. It seems that it has been rancid because it has been too long. You recognize this as your wife. You are angry and wonder who killed your wife. That's when a voice outside the door catches your attention. It's the villager with a hoe, and the person who leads you know very well is the priest who repeatedly rejected you. They also came for a simple purpose, to kill you. Looking at the priest's triumphant look you seems to have returned to your childhood. You lay down your wife's body. Without the slightest fear of the priest, you, overwhelmed by anger, unleashed your witchcraft on humanity for the first time. In an instant, a group of villagers with fierce faces fell like wheat. Only the priest could barely resist. You promise the priest that you will spare your wife if you tell her the cause of her death. The pastor did not doubt and told the story as it was. The more you listen, the angrier you get. Instead of keeping your promise, you tortured the pastor for three days in the most brutal way. When he died, all that was left was a flesh-stained skeleton. You buried your wife and also knew the cause of her death. It turns out that after you went to sea, a group of nobles came to the village, and they took a fancy to their wives. Wantonly humiliated despite her objections, the humiliated wife was speechless to face you again, and finally committed suicide to end her life. And the group of nobles left afterwards as if nothing had happened. At the age of 19, you waited at your wife's grave for a year. You smile and say goodbye to your wife's grave and promise her that you will bring the heads of those nobles to her to pay tribute to her. At the age of 20, you followed the priest's guidance to the front of the battlefield. But the nobles you were looking for who bullied your wife have already returned to the family to enjoy a good life. You are outraged by this. And so you come to the capital of the empire. You went to great lengths to kill three nobles using your wizard's means. He was soon hunted down by the people of the temple. In the rush you hide in a tomb. Severe injuries make your body decay, and you thought your life was over, but here you find an ancient spell. This spell allows people to transform into a lich and then use the life box to keep themselves alive forever. You frantically study this technique, and on a whim you try to make a life box through your soul. You ended up making it. You endure the pain and split your soul into pieces. And use the precious magical items left by the owner of the tomb as a life box. And so your soul survived. You call this magical witchcraft a horcrux. Opening square bracket closing parenthesis. At the age of 40, you still haven't left the tomb for 20 years and you have been studying witchcraft day and night. By chance, you created a peculiar snake. The tower's teeth are highly poisonous. A large pair of eyes can make everyone who sees it die. You will lay eggs from this rooster from a toad-hatched monster. Named Basilisk, you control the snake through your innate ability to communicate with the snake. It makes you feel like a treasure, and the long-buried vengeance flame in your heart burns again. 46 years old, you can't help but get excited when you look at the basilisk in the tomb. You can't wait to get revenge on the ugly nobles. You have come to the empire again with the basilisk. Although things are wrong, you can still find those enemies of the past. You rely on the basilisk to wreak havoc in the imperial capital. Unexpectedly, the high priest of the god of light used the divine descent technique. You are dead under the power of the divine descent technique. At 47, you woke up again, and you didn't really die because of the horcruxes. 
but you also understand that you can't defeat the nobles backed by the gods on your own strength alone. It just so happened that a reckless young man broke into here, and you understood by his dress that this was a fugitive. You stir up resentment in the young man's heart and start teaching him black magic. But unfortunately he does not have wizarding talent. But instead of being disappointed, you take advantage of his gradual release of your guard against you. You have a body again. In order to prevent this body from being reborn again after an accident, you start traveling the continent and find two eligible unawakened little wizards. You graft their bloodline onto your own body by special means and start reproducing like crazy in order to prevent you from dying without other horcruxes to use. At the age of 60, you accidentally created a magical witchcraft that can transform the dead into undead. This discovery makes you ecstatic. You leave deep in the mountains and start with a small town. Begin to continuously transform the undead. When you come to the imperial capital again, you have gathered millions of undead armies around you. This time even the empire could not resist your power the great steward empire was easily destroyed by you. But those nobles have long died, and you grabbed the descendants of those nobles and made them into eternally burning undead lamps, making them suffer every minute. The only descendants of the nobles who escaped fled to the Holy Sea of Light. You did not give up but led the army to the Holy Sea. The gods are angry that you slaughtered your believers. He has come again to slaughter your mighty army. Looking at that majestic figure, you have no fear. Because you have discovered the weakness of the gods. Believer, great deities come from faith. At 61, you wake up again. The shell on your body is your own life offspring, you can't remember. However, this body is obviously much better adaptable. You know it's because it's for your descendants. You have discovered God's weaknesses. This doesn't frighten you, it excites you. At this moment you understand your ideals. I also know what I want to do. You decide, to slaughter the gods. Seventy years old, in this decade of research, you have finally found a witchcraft that can quickly slaughter humans. You find a peculiar pus on the rat's body. Through experiments, you find that this pus causes swollen pus on the human body and eventually causes the victim to die within three days. You are overjoyed. The largest and most common fleas were selected as the source of transmission. And look at rats whose bodies are rich in this virus. 74 years old, you feel like the time has come. You release a large number of sick rats, and in an instant, the number of rats in countless cities increases. The extreme ferocity and hunger of these rats led them to attack humans. Some people found that people bitten by rats developed a fever and died. People panicked and began to exterminate rats en masse. The course of the disease slows down. But they don't know that this is part of your strategy. As a large number of rats were wiped out, the fleas lost their hosts and had to transfer to humans. And the epidemic also began to break out in large numbers. In an instant, the land was full of corpses. Burned bodies could be seen everywhere. The disease spread, from the Mediterranean to the European continent. Countless human deaths. You are very happy because you perceive the divine light of the church weakening. This represents the weakening of divine power. You begin to preach your feet to other wizards through the dark world. The wizards were shocked. They are terrified of your madness and adored by your mighty power. You have proclaimed to them your purpose, to slaughter the gods. Some of them are excited and some are afraid. You lead wizards and dark creatures willing to follow you to the various holy seas. You destroy the temple and kill the priests and the clergy. You crazy reaper lives. Stitched beasts, cursed dolls, corpses, skeletal towers. Countless powerful magics were produced during this period. You take the Dark Legion on the path of slaughtering the gods. At the age of 80, you successfully lured the God of Light. The Great War lasted three days. Together, you will kill the debilitated gods who have lost their faith. You understand that the gods are, after all, just a more powerful creature. You feel this and you are satisfied, and you fall. The curse of the gods of light before death prevented you from being resurrected. As the talent drawn at the end of this simulation. Yes, select the talent apothesis and replace the apothecary talent with pioneer. Select done. Talent begins to fix. Fixed success. Braun opened his eyes and felt that his body had never been better. It's as if I'm freed from my shackles and become freer. Braun, are you actually sleeping? It's really not like you. Quote, quote.
Sabini said as he sat on the edge of the bed in his pajamas. Braun pretended to have just woken up and yawned. Relax once in a while. Otherwise, it is not good to tighten too tightly. By the way, do you want to go to Black Lake to play in a while? There is a particularly large squid there that especially likes to come out in the sun at noon. No, Shabini, I think needs more than a squid as a review, and there is still a week to go to the exam. Quote. Shabini's face collapsed instantly. I wanted to go out and play, and you made me want to go to the library right now. That's a good idea Shabini. Looking forward to seeing you again next year. Quote. Hey, what does that mean? Sabini asked dissatisfiedly. Another roommate who was brushing his teeth said leisurely. If you don't pass the exam, it means you need to repeat the exam. Of course we won't see each other. Shet, Shabini scolded and his face turned a little white. Hurriedly got dressed and prepared to go to the library. Good luck. In response, there was a crackling sound of the door closing. Braun and the roommate chatted a few more words. He slept leisurely. After running in the Forbidden Forest for half the night and fighting a battle, he was indeed a little tired at the moment. It didn't take long for him to fall asleep. The days passed quickly, and the day of the exams arrived. It was a hot day, and not a single cool breeze blew through. The classroom where the questions were answered was even more uncomfortable. Braun sat at his desk and took the quill and test papers. These things are all put on an anti-cheat curse. The purpose is to prevent some little wizards from cheating. After getting the test paper, Braun looked at it and found that there were no difficult problems and began to write it. I saw that the students around me were still scratching their ears and cheeks. Braun confidently got up and handed the test paper to Professor Flitwick, who was proctoring the exam in front of the podium. After receiving his approval, he left. The afternoon is still a written test. It's just that the spell has become transfiguration. This knowledge was not difficult for Braun. The same as in the morning in one go. Braun fully. Listen and say your name. Braun walked into the classroom without hesitation. Hash. Professor Flitwick nodded with a smile and pointed to the pineapple on the table. Come on, try it and see if you can make it tap dance. To say tap dance is really just a test of proficiency in the floating charm. Whether it can make the pineapple swing up and down. Braun certainly did it easily before Professor Flitwick could approve. I saw Braun wave his wand again only to see the appearance of the pineapple gradually change into a pineapple gentleman with long eyes and a suit and a bowler hat. Two calves swing constantly, and a pair of small short hands waving crutches. A real tap dance was performed in front of Professor Flitwick. After bending down and bowing, it changed back to its original state again. Very nice idea, Braun, combined transfiguration and charms. Full marks, undoubtedly full marks. Quote. Professor Flitwick patted Braun on the shoulder in surprise. Study hard, I'll invite you to my charms club when you're in second grade. Thank you, Professor Flitwick. Braun said respectfully. Leaving the classroom for the charms exam, Braun and the other young wizards walked to the next professor to test transfiguration. How about Braun? Hermione asked when she saw Braun coming. No problem. Professor Flitwick told me I was a perfect score. Quote. You're amazing, Hermione said excitedly, and not long after that, she said with some loss. It's a pity that my test paper only scored more than 90 points plus the actual operation is only more than 110 points. This is already very powerful. Braun reassured. Hermione Granger. Hermione's name was shouted inside the house. I'll go first. Hermione waved at Braun and ran in. It took another moment before it was Braun's turn. Entering the classroom, Professor McGonagall was staring at him seriously. In front of Professor McGonagall is a mouse motionless with a spell applied. Ready, Mr. Foley. Of course, Professor. Then I'll let the rat go. All you need to do is use the transfiguration spell to turn this running mouse into a snuffbox. The more beautiful it is, the higher the score. After speaking, let the mouse go. The rat is no longer comfortable and prepares to run away. Haven't waited for it to take a few steps yet. He was hit by bronze spell. Slowly turned into a silver snuffbox. The surface is engraved with delicate patterns and figures. On closer inspection, it seems like a small story. Professor McGonagall observed. Great, Mr. Foley. This is the best snuffbox I've seen since proctoring today. Full marks. Next potions class. 
The exam topic for potions class was scabies elixir. Very simple topic. Snape stood behind Harry and Ronald at the beginning of the exam and stared at their steps. Any mistake, he will point out sarcastically. Harry and Ronald trembled and didn't know what to do. But there are worse than them. Neville failed again. Of course, this time it was a new mistake. His crucible emitted a foul smell. Even Snape was speechless. As a result, he was qualified to fail and retake the exam. In defense against the dark arts class, their exams are simple. I made a title that was completely copied from a book. Without the slightest care, however, Braun looked at Quirrell's absent-minded look and knew that all he was thinking about was the history of magic at the moment. There is no time to give questions to the young wizards. After completing the last exam paper for the history of magic, finally all the exams are over. Put down the quill pen. End of answer. Quote. Cuthbert Bin's voice sounded without the slightest emotion. He then rolled up the test paper and left the classroom through the blackboard. It's finally over. Ronald cheered. Next we can play for a whole week. Don't think about exams, don't think about revision. The history of magic is much easier than I thought. There is no werewolf code of conduct and no elf rebellion process. Hermione muttered, Braun, what do you think? It's okay. No amount of difficulty is a very basic thing. Quote, for Braun, who has memorized the history of magic textbook, this exam can be said to be not difficult in the slightest. Just copy what is in your head onto the test paper. There is no technology at all. Lying on the warm lawn, Braun enjoys the afternoon sun. I couldn't help but narrow my eyes comfortably. Not far away, Fred and George were constantly touching the tentacles of the big squid. It seems that I was wondering where it would be better to cut a piece from. Harry, what's wrong with you? Ronald looked at Harry who kept touching his forehead and couldn't help but ask with some concern. Headache. I don't know what's going on, the scar hurts. Harry rubbed his forehead as he spoke. The three muttered for a while and ran in the direction of the forbidden forest. Braun glanced casually and didn't pay much attention. Return to the lounge in the evening. At this moment, the lounge is decorated with flowers, and there is a box of laborious fireworks in the corner. On the table were cakes and barrels of butterbeer. These things were bought from Hogsmeade Village by the senior class. The purpose is to prepare to celebrate the end of the exam. The little snakes ate the cake with joy. Drinking butterbeer. Although it is said that the little wizard is not allowed to drink, he obviously does not care about these at the moment. It tastes good. Braun took a sip. Although it is said to be beer, it does not contain much alcohol. The taste is a bit like soda with butter. But it's not so sweet. Not far away, Shabini is setting off laborious fireworks. Fireworks hovering on the roof caused the young wizards to exclaim. Malfoy sat reluctantly next to Pansy. He complained about the cheapness of butterbeer and gulped it down. Pansy flattered from time to time, but Malfoy's appearance was clearly not very acceptable. Daphne sat around the fire with a few other little witches eating the candy that the seniors had brought back. From time to time we talk about something. From time to time, he covered his mouth and burst into laughter. Here, Everyone celebrated happily and celebrated the end of the exam. As well as a week of vacation. Braun hanging out together. Daphne invited. Braun thought about it and did not push back. Okay. Braun, Daphne, and Sabini wandered around campus and couldn't help but walk to the edge of the Black Lake. There are many little wizards here. One by one, they either lie on the grass and bask in the sun or go to the Black Lake to play in the water. Let's play wizard chess. Sabini excitedly took out the wizard chess and said. Okay, I'll get down with you. Daphne said happily. It wasn't long before Daphne was killed and discarded of her armor. The little face wrinkled together. My wizard chess is very powerful. Sabini said triumphantly. That's how much you owe and how much you underwhelm. To the indignation of Daphne. Braun you do it for me. Beat this guy hard. Quote. Me, I don't know much. Quote. Shabini's originally worried expression instantly relaxed, and he pretended to be generous. It's okay, Braun I'll let you. As he spoke, his eyes couldn't help but show excitement. If you can beat Braun from the wizard chess, you will blow it when you go back. I can't push it off again. Braun sat across from Shabini. Come on, white chess first, I'll go first. He said and directed his pawn to walk forward. Like Shabini, Braun stepped his black pawn a block forward. Knight, 
Go to the right. Braun shouted to the knight on the chessboard. Sabini continued to control the pawn and move forward. Braun directed his bishop to take a step to the left. In this way, the two sides met each other. Qian Nuo Zhao. From time to time, some pieces were defeated and ran to the bottom of the board. Then cheer for your side. That's it. The queen is three blocks forward. The white king stepped back. The bishop took his place. Warrior two blocks forward. The black warrior walked in front of the white bishop and was suddenly defeated by the white bishop. And the white bishop was dragged down by the black queen. The black queen was again defeated by the white king. In this way, both sides lost some important arms. Braun, Braun wizard chess is not like that. Sabini said with some excitement as he saw his pawn finish off Braun's black queen. From time to time, he also shows off his knowledge of wizard chess. What international wizard chess champion wants to take as an apprentice after seeing it? What relies on wizard chess to make the little wizard who bullies him bow down? Anyway, how to exaggerate how to come? Braun, on the other hand, laughed and said nothing. Continue to command his black bishop to fill the vacant position of the black queen. Continue to follow the method just now. Braun, are you going to be too aggressive? Daphne on the side was not very optimistic about the euphemistic prompt. Don't worry, come to the country slowly, Braun said confidently. Not long after, Braun moved a warrior to the white king and said to Shabini with a smile. General, or kill the king. I saw that on the chessboard, although the number of white chess pieces was dominant, the white king was surrounded by black warrior knights. Forced into a corner and unable to move, the pawn took off his crown and lowered his saber and bowed respectfully in Braun's direction. The black chess pieces present cheered. Bai Chi, on the other hand, lowered his head lowly. Shabini was clearly exasperated. Aren't you unable to play? Braun said innocently. I mean I don't play much. It means a little bit but not very proficient. What do you call this a little bit better? Thinking of the cow he just bragged about, he couldn't help but reddened his cheeks. The mouth is hard. I was careless just now. One more round. After speaking, he added. I won't let you this time. Braun has nothing to offer. Idle is idle anyway. This time Sabini picked up the spirit of 12 points. But unfortunately the results have not changed. General. Braun said with a smile. Shabini looked a little ugly. Come again. General. Come again. Throughout the afternoon, Shabini's angry roar of pain was constantly heard by the Black Lake. Intel. I won. I won. Shabini burst out laughing. It's as if I've won a prize of more than 100,000. Constantly running back and forth by the Black Lake. Some little wizards were afraid to stay away from him, for fear that this little wizard would go crazy. He'll be fine, Daphne asked worriedly. Braun scratched his head. It should be fine. You too. Just win him a few rounds. I want to win all the time. Daphne grumbled. Braun looked somewhat innocent. I don't want to. I'm really trying my best to release water. But how can strength not allow it? Daphne gave him a blank look, not wanting to take care of this stinky fart. I secretly decided in my heart that I would never play wizarding chess with Braun in the future. She was a beautiful little witch who didn't want to be crazy like Shabini. It was getting dark, and the little wizards by the Black Lake had left. Braun and Daphne pulled Sabini, who was still convulsing, to the auditorium for dinner. After dinner, when they were about to go back to the common room together, they casually walked past the back of Harry and heard some words. On the right-hand side of the fourth floor, Dumbledore. Braun leaned over with some curiosity to hear what was going on. Harry, who was excavated, glared at him with a look of suspicion. Ronald and Hermione were apologetic. Oh, sorry I'm a little curious. After speaking, he left without any remorse. Harry stared at Braun until after he left. We were found out by Braun and he had to tell Snape. Don't say that, Braun has nothing to do with Snape. Hermione said a little irritably. Harry muttered a few words and then stopped talking and continued to talk to the two AFDB about his plan. Harry Potter is going on a night tour again. Look I don't catch him. Quote. Malfoy whispered past Braun's side. Braun couldn't help but think of what was about to happen. Forget it. This matter has nothing to do with me, so don't interfere. Braun thought secretly in his heart. They were going down to the second floor with Daphne when an uninvited guest stopped them. 
It's Quirrell with a turban and garlic smell. At the moment, his face was a little gloomy. Professor Foley. Although the three of them did not like the professor full of garlic very much, they still answered out of politeness and respect. Representative Foley walked forward with a smile. I have something for you to come with me to the office. Before Braun could refuse, Sabini urgently agreed. Yes, Professor Quirrell, what's the matter with you? Go to my office. There are too many small things to test papers, you can help me change them. Quote. Sabini was so excited that he didn't know what to say. This is a good thing, if you can change the test paper, you will have hope to pass the defense against the dark arts class. When even can't wait to follow. Let's go, Braun. Daphne said, looking at Braun, who was still standing motionless. Helplessness flashed in Braun's eyes. I had to follow. After all, it is much safer to follow up by yourself than for the two of them. Quirrell's office didn't smell as much as his body, but it looked plain and tidy. As soon as he entered the house, Sabini couldn't wait to ask. Professor Quirrell, which test paper? Where is the test paper? Wait, I'll get it for you. Braun couldn't help but feel a sense of crisis. Seeing Quirrell's eyes a little weird and neat, he squatted down. Just as Braun expected, as soon as Quirrell's voice fell, three white lights flew towards the three. Braun quickly pulled out his wand after dodging ahead of time. But the other two were not so lucky and fell to the ground after being hit by the spell. Come out, if you don't want your little classmates to have an accident. Quirrell held Daphne in one hand, and the wand in his hand flashed green and aimed at her head. Braun saw it from behind the cabinet, reluctantly stood up. Sure enough, I knew you were the most difficult to deal with. Braun fully. Quirrell said with a sneer. Braun pretended to be a little panicked, but his left hand silently took out the alienation seed. Professor Quirrell, what are you doing now? For the gold gallon, as long as you release us, we will definitely let the family send you gold galleon when we go back. Quote quote. Professor Quirrell sneered, I'm not in the mood to play tricks with you. Hand over the alienated seed of your left hand. And the wand, if you don't want your classmates to die. Quote. Braun hesitated. Finally, with a sigh, he handed over the wand in his hand and the alienated seed. Quirrell took Braun's stuff and relaxed a little. Oak wand, a rare material. And this weird alienated seed. Braun stared at Quirrell. What the hell do you want to do? Me. Quirrell flashed a mysterious smile. Follow me, you will naturally have the answer. He said and pulled out a pocket to pack Sabini and Daphne up. Okay, now let's go. Saying that, he grabbed Braun's shoulder a little affectionately, but the wand had already poked at Braun's back. Don't move, I think you should wait until what the spell that was bubbling green light just now. That's a destiny curse. I guess as a pureblood, you shouldn't be unfamiliar with it. So be honest. I'll let you go when it's over. Single quote. Quirrell and Braun whispered as they walked down the hallway. The purpose was to fear that Braun would yell and attract other wizards. Braun was silent. There was no turmoil either. Quirrell is very satisfied with Braun's knowledge. The two came to the door of the corridor on the right-hand side of the fourth floor. Barajo cave open. Quirrell uses a spell to open the door. Inside, a huge three-headed dog was staring at it. I think you should, he said and threw Braun a harp. Braun couldn't help but feel familiar when he got the harp. This is the memory of the original body. As an old pure blood family, the harp is still used as an instrument. Hold the piano in one hand and gently pluck it with the other. Graceful music comes from the harp in Braun's hand. And the originally grumpy three-headed dog Lu Wei also slowly fell asleep under the sound of Braun's piano. It plays very well, Quirrell said approvingly, then motioned for Braun to jump through the trap door. Braun jumped straight without hesitation. After Braun jumped, Quirrell followed suit and closed the trapdoor. I didn't expect you to be so calm. Flames roar. Quirrell's spell caused the giant devil vine to shrink into a ball. Braun was also put down, coughing incessantly. The devil vine bundled very hard just now, making him a little suffocated. I don't think you're going to let me die. Braun wiped the saliva from the corner of his mouth. Quirrell didn't say anything. Instead, he took Braun and moved on. In front of them was a stone corridor, along which the two walked, the sound of footsteps echoing in the empty corridor. Gradually the front becomes brighter. Thousands of birds flutter in the air. 
The tremor of the wings made the flames on the torches blow a little less steadily. Braun and Quirrell continued to walk forward, only to find that these were not birds but a flock of keys with transparent wings. On the opposite side of the key is a huge stone door. It seemed that the keys were obviously a little restless when they noticed someone coming. Uneasiness flew around. Araho cave open. Sesame open the door. The door opens. Quirrell tried several spell gates without any response. Only then did he look at the flying keys a little unwillingly. Gritting his teeth. Looks like I'll have to find one of these keys. What a kid's trick. Quote. Don't look at me. I don't know anything about Quidditch. Braun noticed Quirrell's gaze, glanced at the broom in front of the keys and said. Quirrell snorted, whispered to himself, the master, what should I do? It didn't take long for Quirrell to become indifferent. The eyes have also become vertical pupils similar to snakes. A casual glance at Braun made him feel creepy. Unconsciously lowered his head. But Quirrell apparently didn't focus on Braun. Instead, he walked to the flying key. There is no flying broom on the side. Instead, start observing the key. Soon he took out his wand. All traces, traces have a source. The voice is cold with a hint of snake slipperiness. I saw that with the movement of the incantation, a light connecting the door and the key appeared. And the direction of the light is a key that does not look good. The key flies. I saw that the unattractive key kept breaking free. But it ended up in Quirrell's hands. Quirrell gripped hard. The key that was originally struggling instantly became honest and looked a little sluggish. As the key arrived, Quirrell's expression changed back to its original state. Then he gasped heavily. The indifferent aura around him also disappeared. Took a vitality potion from his arms and drank it in one gulp. That's how comfortable it feels. Then he did not hesitate, but went straight to the gate. Insert the key into the keyhole. With a click, the key disappeared and the door slowly opened. I saw that the room was pitch black. As Braun and Quirrell walked in, the room suddenly became brightly lit. I saw that there was a huge chessboard in the room, and the chessboard was full of black and white chess pieces. The chess pieces are as big as adults, and they are either wearing armor or costumes. Transfiguration plus some other magic, Quirrell said with a gloomy face. Originally, he wanted to try if he could break through directly, but now he stopped thinking about it. You sit up. All control, Quirrell threatens to put Braun on the pawn. Okay, Braun sat in the knight's seat as promised. White chess first. As Braun sits on the wizard chess, the opposite white chess moves. One soldier advanced two blocks. Quirrell controlled the black warrior to push up. The white warriors also sent knights. Then you come and go. You, go up, quote, Quirrell said, controlling Braun's pawns. Then Braun's knight rushed up defeated the opposing fighter. Braun, on the other hand, dodged uninjured. Under Quirrell's command, finally. The White King was cornered. Respectfully get out of the way. A gate leading to the end is revealed. Before Braun could get too closer, he smelled a foul stench through the door. He was still familiar with this stench, if he guessed correctly. This is the tube card I set up, and inside is a troll. Quirrell said as he cast a bubble head spell on himself. As for Braun, he selectively forgot. Push open the door and the stench comes to you. Several undressed trolls are playing happily inside. Searching for the true meaning of life. The arrival of Quirrell and Braun obviously upset the big guys. One by one, they lifted their sticks and prepared to eat these two small snacks. But before they could get closer, Quirrell's spell flew out first. I saw that the head of the leading monster was like a watermelon hit by green light and shattered. This scene frightened the two trolls around. But not before their little brain wondered why this accident happened. He followed in the footsteps of the giant monster just now. Became three headless corpses. Let's go, Quirrell said with some arrogance. After speaking, he added as if to show off. I still have some experience in dealing with these guys. But at the moment, Braun, who was disgusted by the smell, was obviously not in the mood to take care of him. Quirrell snorted coldly. Without saying anything, he roughly pulled Braun to the next level. This time the levels are different from the previous ones. When Braun and Quirrell came in, suddenly, flames burned around and the flames continued to approach the center. The ground became even more transparent. Through the floor, you can see the sea of fire underground. In front of them was a long table with seven bottles of potions and a piece of parchment. 
Quirrell picked up the parchment with a gloomy face and looked at it. Danger comes first, safety comes last. Of the seven, two are useful. One forward, one backward. Two drunkards, useless. Three killers are waiting in line. Choose it. Don't stop and wait for the flames. Shet, this is not potions refining. Quirrell looked darkly at the seven bottles of different sizes in front of him. He captured Braun so he could help him pass Snape's levels, but he didn't expect it to be of any use in the end. Snape, Quirrell lowered his voice. Maybe I can help you. Braun said nervously. He didn't know how Quirrell got through the original, but he knew that if he didn't get any faster, the flames would burn over. You, Quirrell handed the parchment over suspiciously. Logic questions. Braun took a few glances and thought for a moment. I see. This bottle, the smallest one is through the flames. Quote. Braun said, pointing to the smallest bottle of elixir. This bottle is only enough for one person, or will you give Daphne and Sabini to me and we leave? Don't worry, I won't say anything. If not, you can release the memory erasure spell on me. I think it's better to take you with me. Braun fully. Quirrell picked up the bottle of potion and drank it in one gulp. Then he pulled out his pocket and motioned for Braun to enter. Let's go inside. I think I can still bring you in with this. Quote. Braun sighed. Got in. Through the mouth of his pocket, Braun looked at the huge Quirrell with a complicated heart. To be honest, he really doesn't like this feeling of being controlled by people. But who made him have concerns about that? I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.